Hello and welcome to Watch Our Crap Ends, a podcast about all that crap on Bravo that we just love to talk about. I'm Ben Mandelker, and joining me today from the back alley of Sir is the one and only Mr. Ronnie Karam. Hi, Ronnie. How are you? Devastated, freed, um, a new person, um, a butterfly that just came out of a fucking cocoon because it was the season finale, a scandal, okay? Worm stash, was... as I like to refer to it, worm stash. Okay, here it's we the, are. The episode that everyone's been waiting for. It um, is. Uh, wow, we have a lot to dive into. It's a, it's a whole bunch. But before we do that, obligatory announcements, of course, uh, we are we have six more shows left on our Cheetah Brand tour. More could not be a more appropriate name for our tour given what's happening on Vanderpump Rules. But the Cheetah Brand tour has six stops left. Um, starting in June, we will be in San Diego. We're going to be in St. Paul, Min- uh, Minnesota, Chicago, Columbus, Boston, and we are going to finish it all up at the Foxwoods Casino in beautiful Connecticut. So um, those are all going to be great shows. Um, Hopefully they will coincide with a lot of these big, crazy reunions that are happening across Vanderpump Rules and Real Housewives of New Jersey. Either way, regardless of what it is we're covering, it's always great to be in a giant theater packed with your people, our people, Bravo fans. So cannot express how much fun that we've been having and we want you to have fun too. And we only have six shows left and then we have to wait till next year. So go to watchercrappens.com to get your tickets and then ronnie i know you're champing at the bit chomping. say what the it's chomping at the bit all right i'm not champing at the you're bit. not champing at the bit okay chomping you can chomp at, at the bit too chomping well, somewhere between chomping it and is chomping, chomping. You were doing is it something... chomping or champing now you've got me. i always you're thought smarter. it was chomping at i always thought it was chomping at the bit but i feel like recently i learned it was champing at the bit is you it? know what while you know what while you are gnawing at the bit why don't you uh, tell everyone what you've been working on with Patreon, and I will get a clarification. Oh, this is a we. This is a we. Okay, so I know, we've... but like it's a thing that you've really spirit. I'm not trying to make it sound like like this. Is, I'm just saying that like you you have been very excited. You've been teeing up this announcement all week, so I wanted to give you the the, the floor. Well, thank you. I've been chomp champ and get the bit. So basically, we're changing our Patreon. We haven't changed it since we started it nine years ago so we're finally changing it one thing we wanted to give you guys because of course we're raising the prices a little we're not raising it for people who are already signed up but we are putting all of we're doing more video first of all because we love doing these crappens on demand videos but we also want to give things to people who don't pay you know who don't have the money to pay and stuff so we will be starting to make all of our videos a free the week after they are released. If you want them fresh, it's on the video level, still at Crappens On Demand, but there's gonna be a lot of them now. Almost all, probably. Not all, we're not gonna say all. We still want the right to be feeling ugly or just not in the mood, or sometimes I just wanna pick my nose. You know what I mean? Or like if we're doing a live show, something like that. But for the most yeah. part, we're gonna to move to video recaps. We do have a YouTube channel. It's Watch It Crappens. We've had it for a long time. We barely use it. It's been a storage shed. But we are <laughs> going to start putting videos up there. So a week after Atlanta, that re- that video recap will be live uh, for free. For everybody who wants to just watch what crappens, all the time please stay subscribed because that's a help but uh on your podcast feed but those podcasts will all be on patreon um now so still free still five five to eight shows or whatever we're doing right now a week for free for everybody and now the videos will be more and free for some of you so go check out our patreon we're super excited go check out our youtube okay really excited to be here okay and now i actually get to see my little benuni every day instead of just a couple of days a week yeah it's like cra- it. we're just crapping videos all the time and um we've also recently because we're really on top of things um we've been playing with virtual backgrounds we've been doing them on yeah. zoom lately so uh for those if, if this is going to entice anyone to watch our videos Ronnie does have an image of the Sir Back Alley up, and I have an image of Ariana from Watch What Happens Live tonight. Um, I took a picture of it because um, Ariana's the best, and she uh, this like the to this episode watching Tom Sandoval go from like 
home to home to sofa to bodega, just pleading his sad, pathetic case. That was so like offensive. His case was so offensive. It just makes me just my heart goes out to what she's had to endure through this ordeal. So I am celebrating Ariana right now through my virtual background, which is really the best way to celebrate anyone, I think. Um, listen, I like Ariana as much as the next person. I believe the only thing we should be celebrating on Sir is the garbage uh, that comes out of it, which is why I'm in the Sir Alley today. Okay, well, yeah. I have an angel looking over my fucking shoulder today. <laughs> I, I okay. yes. This also just makes me feel like I'm like part of like a very cool moment in time of pop culture. I'm like, I'm on Watch Happens Live also, guys. Yeah, that's that is what Ben has done. He's put himself on one of the highest rated episodes of Watch What I'm, Happens Live ever. And I'm just yeah. like in the fucking smoking alley. And you know what? <laughs> it's just how our lives actually work but in real life. I, I actually look like I'm actively sitting on Ariana's lap. Like I look here, wait, here we go. You look like a little boy, and Ariana is like your your big mama, and you are sitting on her lap, and she's approved. She's doing what she did for Tom Sandoval all of these years, and she encouraged. And listen, I'm gonna go out and just start pissing people off immediately because I know it's gonna happen. It's bound to. Um, I you know seeing Ariana's face, I'm mad. Like I'm mad seeing her face behind you, she, her angelic little face, just looking over your shoulder. Because I feel like she's being so supportive of you right now, and she's like, "Ben, you can do it." And you know what? That's what got us Tom Sandoval singing was this fucking woman supporting him and telling <laughs> him know. he could do anything. That's <laughs> what wrought this man, Ariana's <laughs> fucking angelic, supportive nature. You created Tom Sandoval. You told Tom, "Go create a band, Tom. You can sing, Tom. I believe in you, Tom." <laughs> Thanks a I lot. I don't know if I love Dick. this take. I don't know if I love it, but I know what you're saying. Um, there it is. You know, sometimes you, you sometimes you have to look at the garden that the bad weed came out of, and well, Ariana's holding the hoe. And I say you have supported the wrong person, and now you have hurt my head. You have brought your problems <laughs> and his his pitch issues to harm my ears. Okay, so where's my apology? That's my question. Yeah. We'll have to we'll have to see. We'll have to see. Well, listen, um, yeah, Tom Sandoval and that that cover band, not great to listen to at all. Um, has there ever been, I mean, we've seen a lot of midlife crises on the podcast. Oh, not on the podcast, but on Bravo, like a lot of them. But really, so few have been as cliche and by the numbers as Tom Sandoval. And he literally says, like, dude, as soon as I turned 40, I was like, I don't want to be married to her anymore. I'm like, well... Could, could you just have, you can't even be original in your, in your midlife crisis. Even your midlife crisis is a cover band of other people's midlife crises. You know, and I think that that's actually hitting it on the head. It's a cover song that he's singing badly. It's something he's heard before where people have mid, they get old and then they want to change their life. And that's what he, no, he doesn't feel that. He doesn't feel that he's too old. He's not running around acting like a 20 year old because he believes he's too old. He still believes he's 20. Like he doesn't, I don't believe the midlife crisis thing for a second. I believe he heard it from someplace and that's what he's trying to get pity for. I don't think he's really having it. I think he's, delusional as fucking ever this guy i i think he's like literally having a midlife crisis but i think he's hoping that that explains everything and it literally does not he's just a uh narcissistic pig who who conned a lot of us me included me included oh but... you're so conned or ben <laughs> ben i wish i was there to hug you okay that's okay well <laughs> you're, luckily you're not ben has been conned Luckily, you're not. <laughs> All right, I'm fired up. So let's start. Let's. Get I know you're really, you're you're really. Well, you're also just fresh off it. You just finished it. Like I just finished ago. it. I've, I've, I've I'm had like an hour and a half to rage. digest. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it is a late night recap, which is when I tend to get in trouble the most on uh, our own show. Watch it crap. Yeah. So here we go. Let's do it. Let's get in some fucking trouble. Okay, so it's New York City, March first. 2023. Welcome to Watch What Happens Live. We're in the Bravo Clubhouse on the first day of Women's History Month with two ladies I'm making history with by asking them about their boobs. Sheena and Raquel. Sheena and Raquel. Who's hotter? Which Tom is hotter? Tom or Tom? I love that they have the serious music playing over one of these stupid games on Watch What Happens. I know. It's like, dong, 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 dong. Women's History Month. 2023.
Whose boobs are better, Tom or Tom? <laughs> Seriously, what a juxtaposition. So um, he's like, okay, I'm the countdown. Number th- I'm going to count down to three, and then you guys answer. Three, two, ah! Okay, Sheena, I'm going to need you to hold on. As we're at, not at one yet. Three, two. I have a question. I have a question. Do I say at, on one, or do I wait till after one? Uh, hold on. Let me uh, consult with producers. Uh, they say after one. Okay, I got it, I got it, I got it. Got it. Three, two, two. <laughs> <laughs> are you gonna say corner because you can be like if you're counting like that like someone could be coming out of the kitchen backwards and you could hit them and you could drop a whole tray i've seen it happen ah! uh so um uh yeah so sheena says sandoval this is a clip that's very they famous that made its clip that's... but yeah i was gonna say but Ra- what i was gonna say was that raquel also says sandoval right. and andy's like what Oh, wow, wow, you said it too. And it's Echo, Echo, Sandoval, Sandoval, Sand. The correct answer actually was genital warts. You both got that wrong, okay? <laughs> so then the producer's like, all right, are you guys ready to talk about this? And we see a split screen of Tom over here and Ariane over here in their own confessionals. And they both say at the same time, no. So we start with Tom. Two days ago, Raquel was in New York with Sheena doing Watch What Happens Live, and my band was performing at Tom Tom in L.A. for the release of my new single. Oh, shut the <laughs> fuck up. Already, already I'm screaming at the TV. Your new single, shut up, okay? Those like shower songs by Sandoval. Give me a fucking break with that. Yeah, I'm wondering what that the name of that song was. Uh, his, his, his single, I, I'm like, is it? about like LED lights doing mushrooms while waving an LED light in the field and pretending it's Coachella. Tom Sandoval's first single. Let's see. Drops debut single. Let's see what it is. Well, he wanted to have a big single moment and now he has one. It's called Superstars. (laughs) Oh, that's sad. Is that dedicated to Raquel's um, galaxy projection? (laughs) Projector? Okay, so he's uh, telling us a story, and then we see Ariana going crazy, cheering for him at Tom Tom in a phone cam. And then Tom's like, and then my phone fell out of my pocket, and somebody handed it to Ariana, or Ariana for safekeeping. And I was like, dude! And then cuts to Ariana, and she's like, call it women's intuition, call it a light bulb, whatever. And then we see a close-up on the phone in her lap, and it's open to the camera app. I love that she even picks up his phone and is supportive enough to think, you know what I'm going to do with his phone? I'm going to take pictures of him. I know he'll love, I'm going to do the thing that he loves to see most on his phone. Pictures of himself. I'm going to take some of those. Yeah. And she just like had this intuition, which I'm still curious about. And Andy asked her on Watch What Happens Live. And he asked her, what was this intuition? And she was just like, well, um, I would always be asking him um, like where, like where he was late at night, he always be like Schwartz, 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 and he always be, and I'd like look at his phone and he'd show me his Schwartz. So she clearly, this was something that she was suspicious of already, you know. So she looked at it and she's, uh, she's, she said that she found on the camera roll a screen recording of Raquel and Tom on Facetime, and she goes, "My stomach dropped into my fucking ass," which, by the way, is a big trending beauty technique in Beverly Hills these days. It's just, you just go in, you see Dr. Nassif, and they say, put my stomach in my ass. And uh, I know some of us pay a lot of money for that. What are you crying about? (laughs) So Tom's like, and normally I would delete something like that, but it had been such a busy, chaotic day. And you wanted to keep the vid in your spank bank, duh. And brag about the somewhat aged out of pageants, but still young ass that you're hauling, Tom. Fucking Tom. Yeah, normally I'd screen record myself uh, jerking off to somebody on FaceTime, and then I'd delete it. No, you wouldn't. Why are you recording it in the first place? Just like to give yourself notes later, and then you're going to free up some 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 space on your phone for more notes? Shut up, Tom. We're not going to well, delete that later. Good luck to anyone who has a relationship with Tom going forward, and always be like thinking to yourself, how many videos has he deleted of himself jerking off to random starlets? Or what's like a, what's like a, not a starlet, like what's like a tumbleweed let, you know, like a starlet is like a little too, like, I don't think he's gonna be with starlets, but something more down to like on the ground. Groupie, groupie lit, group lit. I mean, I don't know. 
I don't know what you would call it. But um, yeah, no starlets. No starlets in your future, sir. So he's like, and then we were outside so everyone couldn't hear us talk. And Ariana's like, and I called Raquel saying, if you have ever given a shit about me, tell me when this happened. So then we cut to one of the most important witnesses, really in any case you could ever have, Sheena. Yes. She's like, um, wow. Well, so Raquel comes up to me and I'm like, what the fuck has been going on? And then she just nonchalantly, like, it was no big deal. Just because, yeah, me and Sandoval have been having an affair for seven months. Ariana just found out. And then I was like, uh-huh, face shake. Uh-huh, face shake, face shake. Eye cross. <laughs> 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 it's a lot for Sheena. This it's is the Sheena yest of all Sheena episodes, by the way, too. You know, a lot of people um have come out of this looking even better. Sheena is one of them. I yeah. Think. This has been a good moment for Sheena this episode. This Actually, has it was been. a really good moment for almost everybody except the Toms. Literally everyone but the Toms. But considering oh, and by the way, poor Christina, she put in all that work this season. They didn't even invite her to even be at one of the like powwows they didn't even invite her to to like the jv powwow at james's house poor christina yeah, worked so hard christina. but um but sheena i mean Sheena was getting it from the fans like for especially the people the, all the people who are like the big katie fans Ooh, sheena was getting it on reddit they were getting she was getting it on twitter about like she's a terrible person like she's maniacal she was have plotting a scheme da, 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 da. but i feel like this was a really strong sheena redemption episode for her um, considering that this season she was definitely making some enemies online. So then Tom is telling us, you know, with that sad look where he's like kind of squinting his eyes and trying to look really deeply. Yeah. You know, it's just it's such a bad actor. Um, but anyway, he's doing that and he's doing that like, what I did was really fucked up and there's no excuse for it. Victimized off to the side, <laughs> trying However. to foster some tears. Because I love <laughs> Ariana and I care about her. I just don't think we were happy. I just really don't. Uh. It was fucked up and there's no excuse for it. But I will be giving several excuses over the next hour and 15 minutes of your time. Thank you. Exactly. I really hope <laughs> Claire Duval gets a facelift so she doesn't have to look like this shit anymore. Like, yeah. seriously. I'm going to start a, a GoFundMe just to save Claire Duval from having to walk around looking like a mustacheless version of this person. <laughs> she doesn't deserve this. No, she definitely, Claire Duvall does not deserve so many things in life, but especially not this. Yeah. By Great the way, play, yeah. in, in honor of Sheena, I also have now put up my other favorite image of the episode. Sheena, in that moment, went, ah! you're like, it It looks like you have giant it looks like I've got hair. hair. <laughs> the, you know what? This virtual background thing is tricky because I do look like I'm wearing a Sheena wig now. <laughs> you do. But you know what? I kind of like it. So but like the said. drag version of Sheena because it's got to be bigger than life. You know what I mean? It's like you're a drag performer doing Sheena now. Hi, corner. Yeah. Corner. <laughs> corner. Good ass corner. The drag version of Good oh, as Gold. By the way, side comment here. I really would like to talk about the Good as Gold remix that is now appearing on Uber Uber Eats commercials. Um, I believe, did you see the commercials by any chance during this telecast? I've seen the beginning the of internet? it when they're like, hey, Lala's like, hey, we're well, here's the Good as Gold remix. And I was I just fast forward it. Sorry, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't given it. I don't know. I feel like I've got enough hurting me right now. Um, I've got enough attacking me. How is it? Tell me, um, it for it's me. a delight. It's a wonderful commercial, a real um, great showcase for auto tune. And honestly, it's sort of like a Lala redemption moment for me. I'm like, you know, I see, I see the Lala that I once fell in love with in this ridiculous, stupid commercial, but it's basically Sheena and Ariana singing um, uh, good as gold, but like with Uber mixed into it, which is kind of a funny thing. And then like uh, Lala comes in and then three of them are singing together and it's a joy. It's a pure joy. Because you know what? That song is a bop, and it will always be a bop, whether it's remixed or not. That song is a bop. We play it at every live show, and it is really a good song. Dun, 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 because we're good as gold. 
We're gonna party tonight. It's great. It's like got Greece. I think I feel like it's got yeah like the chord structure of a lot of songs from Greece in the fifties. I mean, it's just it's just good art. It's good work. It's good art. And you know what? It makes me realize that we are approaching enough of a Bravo music catalog that we are close to a Bravo jukebox musical. And I'm 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 gonna be excited for it. <laughs> I hope we can get Josh Groban. Uh he's really big right now, but I hope we can get him. Okay, so Ariana uh learned something on Wednesday night. She learned that there are evil, evil people in this world, and sometimes they're the closest people to you, and you have no idea. Have you seen this show? Where the fuck have you been? You're on Vanderpump Rules. You're just now realizing that you're close to evil fucking people? Jesus Christ. You know what? Fuck Logan. I'm going to come over and watch TV with you. You clearly need somebody to start putting some labels on the shit that's coming across your screen, ma'am. <laughs> uh, so now it's March 3rd. And um, we see J we're, we randomly go to like James and Allie's apartment and James is like showing Allie fish that he made or something. He's like, look at this. Look at this. I'm like, OK, great. Good to see that their kitchen's doing well. And it's very rainy. It's, it was during a very rainy time in L.A. This was literally just after the big, quote unquote, blizzard that hit L.A. And um, we have we were in that you know, same rain. We're in that so, same rain. We, we were, were in, in the, the blizzard. Rain. Yeah, we, we were a part we of that blizzard. blizzard. Yeah, we're still alive. Um, I have to give a shout out to all the non Trixies that are showing up to work today. Yeah. Because Vanderpump Rules is like, you know what? We've fucked around enough for 10 years. In our 10th year, we're giving full numbers to people. I don't want just one line anymore. I want a full song that goes over three intro scenes. So we get this one. Yeah, I have to put my bag down before cruising around the town. And I was like, okay, they're going to repeat that five times. But no, then... I saw a cute couple that were making out. My girlfriend has a jacket, so I stopped and turned around. I was like, whoa, mm. this is a whole story. Your girlfriend has a jacket, so you stopped and turned around? What does that mm. mean? And then he just goes, like, ah. Wow. It's powerful. I mean, like, between this and that wonderful song they played last week, that sort of country, country ditty, uh, the music is great. And I, I especially, what I really like, though, is the sick sense of humor that this show has, because this, the main chorus of the song was something like, but the sun keeps on shining and the cars keep on driving. And it's just like raining everywhere. But they keep here playing that lyric over again. The sun keeps on shining. The sun keeps on shining while it's literally raining. That is the metaphor for this show is just like the shit coming down on these people while they're just trying to make it big in Hollywood. It's true. It's like the it's the L.A. thing. The only thing you really care about. It's like you you may be sure, you know, did you just get used and tossed out like trash yesterday? Sure. Do you have yeah, no friends? Sure. Is it the loneliest time in your life? Sure. But hey, the sun's shining and your car still works. That's what the song is about. Your car's still working. That's really all you care about when you live in L.A. At least I can fucking drive somewhere. OK, yeah, it's like that's the thing. That's sort of one of the things that we hold on to. It's it like. Is. It's like, yeah, there may be landslides, there may be earthquakes, there may be crime, there may be like, um, there there are accusations often of like it, the city being just generally vapid. But no matter what anyone says, we're always like, but we got, but we got sunshine. And then when it rains, we're like, we don't have it anymore. <laughs> like that's also, all that driving. We have. It's, it's just such a huge driving culture. You don't walk anywhere. It's just about driving. And you know, people say sometimes LA is the loneliest town, but also you hang out with more people in LA because you're little, literally sitting in traffic with thousands of people for hours at a time. You're just yeah. kind of isolated. It's like, it's like uh soundless disco, you know? Yes. You're just, you're with people in the same club, but you're all shut off from actually hearing each other. And there's something yeah. comforting in that. I agree. Oh, actually, I, I met a girl LA. once. I met a girl once. This is my last comment about this, but I met a girl once who was going to write like a, a paper for her doctorate about how, Driving in LA is both like an extremely social event because it's something everyone has to do together and you all have to cooperate and follow the rules of the road. And yet it is deeply like antisocial because you're just in your car and you like hate everyone else around you and you're not interacting with them. Huh, yeah. Things to think about, you know, when yeah, you listen guys. to a song on Vanderpump Rules, huh? Yeah. And the lyrics just keep going because the car keeps on driving. And when I get back to my car to blow off all the steam, I was checking in my pockets, but I couldn't find my keys. And I saw a parking ticket. It was staring back at me like, wow. Oh, my goodness. This is a regular American pie at this point. 
What a story this, song this is. I hope this was Tom's first single, Superstar. So then we I go so to too. Schwartz's house, and his dog is humping an animal that I can only assume was in a serious relationship with the other stuffed animal on the bed, because that's how this <laughs> fucking show rolls. <laughs> It's just even the stuffed animal sheet. So, and then um, we see Katie pouring tea and then just like more rain. And then we see just like crows in the rain. They're really just like driving home how rainy and depressing that week was. Cause I remember that week. It was just a, it was a sad week in LA before even any of this gossip. Oh, for just... fuck's sake. You guys are still crying about that week. And it's not just you. I know it sounds like I'm yelling at you. I'm not yelling at you. I'm, ye I'm yelling at Los Angeles. You're... Someone else I saw on Twitter the other day was like, oh my God, remember when it was raining? Do you remember when we could walk outside and not be afraid? It was gonna... I was like, seriously, it rained. Yeah. That's all <laughs> that. Yeah, it did rain. Bad. I love it you. rained. Wait, look. By the way, let me bed. don't let don't let me speak. Let the image of Sheena speak. Ah! It rained. It rained. <laughs> I really am so mad that this is centered on my face because people can't see it. I'm gonna go back to the Ariana photo because honestly, I this the Sheena hair is now really distracting me. Okay, we're gonna have anyway to find a way to not get not start playing with their pictures during the show. By the way, I'm uh just oh, thank you. Okay, say, I'm just saying that uh preemptively that I will be a hypocrite about this very soon because I'm already thinking of all the different pictures I'm going to line up to start fucking with you uh with through this okay. thing. So I'm looking forward just, to it greatly. Okay, I will. We're going to have a we're going to have a backdrop bot battle soon. Biatch. Well, this is this is probably the most um backdrop backdrop movement I will be doing uh because I can definitely see myself already getting fatigued at the idea of going to the stupid fucking <laughs> sub menu and then You're clicking so, on I this know, thing. I, I'm watching you do it, and I'm also watching you stare at yourself with Sheena hair, which is pretty good. That's the thing. Okay, I kept so on looking at Sheena's face. I can't do that anymore. Okay, <laughs> now I'm more neutral. I'm focused. Okay, Crows in the Rain, guys. The original working title for this show, Crows in the Rain. All right. So, so Ariana's sitting in the sofa. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh no, yeah, no. oh no, yeah. Oh no, we Katie still got all these. This is a very long song, man. Okay, just fucking, Sorry, just fucking a long story. In. You know what I mean? Long story, yeah. Uh so then uh we go to sort, we see the dog something, then we go to Katie's house, she's doing nothing in her grunge hat, and then this song keeps going. Uh the sun, it keeps on shining, and the car keeps on driving, and then it cuts to what Katie's doing, and she's making tea. I'm like, you guys, just don't put Katie in the opening scene. Like, you don't have to include Katie. This song is too too positive for Katie making tea in her grunge outfit, okay? <laughs> it's like the most depressing tea scene I've ever seen. And then the song, the sun keeps shining, the car keeps driving. You can sit home or you can take a ride. You can get a tan or you can stay inside. But guess what? The sun keeps on shining. Yeah. It's very optimistic for one of the most pessimistic shows in the history of mankind. So um, humankind, so uh, Ariana is sitting on the sofa and this is already like we've seen the trailer a million times of Ariana saying like, you know, I regret ever loving you. And we see that this is what the scene is. And I'm like, oh, we are starting right in this confrontation. I cannot even believe this. So we just like launch right into it. So she's sitting on the sofa. Her friend Meredith, I feel like we've never seen Meredith before. This lady is there and she's hugging her. And then, but also more hilariously, they have a dog. I forget what the dog's name is, but the dog is sitting on the sofa next to Ariana. And the dog is so awkward. The dog is like, uh, is this okay if I'm sitting here? I feel like shit's about to go down. Do you want me to go to a different room? I can do that for you. I'm like, is it okay that I'm here? I, I, I'll Rocks go. Are you know, so I'll go cute, the aren't they? It's like, I wish I could hug you. You know, I'm trying What type to of dog you. was it? It was a cute dog. I don't know. Was it? A, is it a Spuds McKenzie type of dog? It looked like a Spud. Um, yeah, that's her I, dog, I was, but I don't remember what kind of dog it is. That's I just, I loved its awkward energy. Like it definitely was looked like someone well, like who was sitting out of. It knows you're sad, but like dogs know, like they know. It's you know, it's like me. Okay, I'm like a dog. When you're sad and you're crying because something's really wrong, I want to help you, and I know that you're really sad, but I'm not really sure. I'm like, if I hug you, I'm gonna probably get mud on you because I was just outside, or like. I don't know. There's like so many bad things that can happen. So I just kind of sit there next to you and look at you awkwardly and just, I don't know, just wait for you to tell me to do something. I feel like that's how dogs are when you're crying. I feel that's like a... that dog looked like it was sitting on like a public bus next to a couple that was fighting. And I was like, should I change seats? Should I not change? I, like, I kind of want to see this, but I kind of hate this also. Like, and my stop is coming up. Like, what do I do? 
I know. He's like, she's crying, but she also has treats. So what do I do? Should <laughs> I stick this one out? <laughs> so Ariana is talking Raining about outside. how she was with Tom forever, but she's like quickly becoming just icked out over him, like indifferent. And um, this Meredith is holding her head like only a girlfriend can hold your head, like a real girlfriend when you're crying. And she just holds your head like this, like real close to your head. And then she just looks off in the distance while she holds you and slightly rocks you back and forth. <laughs> I just like to thank all my girlfriends for for doing this to me, even though I don't, even though I'm as awkward as that yeah. dog sitting on the couch, just wanting you to give me a treat. So I can yeah, like this just so, like a gentle caress. Then she's like, "Yeah, I mean, he's just giving me the ick." Well, now his ick is on tour, and you encouraged that, so now you get the chance to experience what the rest of us have been feeling for months now, Ariana. Mm. The ick, okay? The ick. The That's extras. what his band should just be called to Tom Sandoval, Tom Sandoval and, the and the most extras, <laughs> the yeah. most extras. Uh, so Ariana is. Um, so meanwhile, Tom is like looking at himself in a mirror, of course, like elsewhere in the house. And uh, I was just like, oh, there he is. So she has a wine bottle in her hand and it's from a wine bottle from their very first trip that they took together. And clearly it was something that they were saving. But of course, now she's drinking it, which is great. And so Sandoval just like walks. This is the famous scene where Sandoval walks through the house and he goes into the kitchen. He's like, um, do you want anything? And she looks at him and goes, for you to die. <laughs> it feels so like, good. Well, that's inevitable. OK, so here's where I got super ragey again, because here's this guy. What is he doing in the house? What fucking nerve of this guy to be yeah. in the house and just shuffling around like. Whatever, just a typical normal fight. Didn't just fuck your best friend for seven months. Just, I'm just gonna make some a, a non dumpling latte over here while you sob, you know. And you know, what? you know what else? Tom doesn't give that dog treats, and that's how else you know he's a motherfucker. That dog yeah. doesn't even look at Tom. He's just like doesn't that guy's not giving him. me treats. That guy's not doing shit for me, you know. Tom is clearly in like the treat zone. Like that's the treats, right, Ryan? Do you keep your treats in the kitchen? Where do you keep your treats? Of course, yeah. Yeah. He's like, there's a human near the treats. I feel like all dogs, when that happens, they're like, I got to stop what I'm doing. I was just about to lick my nuts, but you know what? There's a human near the treats bag. I have to go there. I've got to shoot my shot, see if I can get a treat, you know? And they don't, this dog doesn't even try with Tom. It just knows. He knows. Yeah. Dogs will tell you everything you need to know about a person. And what I need to know is that Tom doesn't give treats. Fuck that guy. So, um, he starts making an ex dumpling latte and Ariana's like, so how was your night at Raquel's last night? And he's like, oh, I was at Schwartz's. And she says, yeah, well, you were also at Schwartz's when you were on FaceTime. So you being at Schwartz's doesn't really mean anything, does it? <laughs> Gross. He was doing that. He was doing the jerk off video with Raquel in Schwartz's house. Where? It's a two Probably... bedroom. Of... <laughs> I was going to say, probably on top of the cheating stuffed animals. <laughs> <laughs> probably probably he was probably like jerking off with the stuffed animal you know they were probably like doing a double facetime just gross and um yeah. just his and by the whole... way to your point by the way to your point earlier like why is tom sandoval still he's still he in that house here? and he's just Even acting like whatever we're yeah. it's just an argument we, we're both doing things wrong here i was not expecting this attitude and i don't know why because i knew that he stayed in the house we all knew it from following the news or whatever but pretty gross at his attitudes like what's up good morning no we had a fight last night <laughs> that was crazy right both, both being drunk and all and so she's trying to have a fight with him right she's like so are you gonna say sorry for what you did and he just sits there and takes a long sip of his soda and like flicks his hair and gives like one of his acting looks off to the side and he's like every time i try to apologize to you it just makes you more angry ariana she's like okay you should still apologize though and he's like okay sorry i didn't want to hurt you the amount of death that would be visited upon this house if i were in that position the death that would fucking rain down on this house that's it are you going, did you hang up? Are you looking at pictures? No, I thought there was, I just, no, I thought no, that was a that's comma. It. I thought it was a I comma, nothing, not a no, no, The amount I'm, of death, I thought you were going to say the amount of death that would rain down on this house. And you were getting all slow. So I was like, he's being dramatic. I don't want to step on him right now. I feel like the amount of death 
You wouldn't even know. I thought there was going to be something like that. So I was like ready for like the big I couldn't even moments. think of anything else. No, that's it. He would be the dead. The amount of death. Everyone has to think about it. Everyone, this is a thought exercise on the podcast to think about the amount of death. Okay. But yeah, she's right there. But yeah, how the fuck do you sit there and look at somebody who you just found out fucked your best friend for seven months and is just sitting there acting like, oh, no big deal. I thought Ariana, actually, in this entire scene, I was so impressed with the way she handled herself. You know, and by the way, I'm I'm not saying this because, yes, we know Ariana and yes, there's a picture of her behind me. Like, I'm just saying as someone watching this show. You know, for me in a high stress environment, A, I tend to cry and B, I get flummoxed with my words. You can see when I get really excited on this podcast, I'm like, blah, 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 artichokes, you know? So I'm so impressed with how she both kept her cool, but she also just like, she just like, she stuck it to him so well in this, in this scene. I was so happy. It was like very like satisfying for me. So he's sitting here saying all this bullshit, like, oh, I was in Schwartz's, you know, et cetera. And uh, that the fact that she would he would say every time I try to apologize to you, it just makes you more angry. It's like, well, actually, you know, it's probably gonna make her the angriest. The fact that you cheated on her and lied on her. OK, or lied to her. So um, and she's like, good. Well, let me be angry. OK, I would I'm going to I don't care. Let me be angry because you should still apologize whether I'm angry or not. It's absolutely correct. You know what it sounds like to me? It sounds like a mother who's telling her teenage idiot the same thing over and over and over. And she's pissed, but she's doing it again. She's like, here we are again. You know, me yelling at Tom on how to fucking pretend like he's a person with actual feelings. You know, that's what it came across to me as. And he's like, I'm sorry. Like the way he whines, like I didn't want to hurt you all. And she's like, okay, so you didn't want to hurt me, but then you continue to do something repeatedly over and over and over again. And he's like, dude, we stopped, dude. That happened. And then it didn't happen like for a while. Oh, wow. Oh, great. That's so good. So you took a pause. Been- you took a pause in your fucking of the other person. That is. Good. Glad there was some downtime. Glad you got some time just like to chill, relax, <laughs> reset before you guys started fucking again. So Aaron is like, oh, great. Well, I've been with you for nine years. And back when you lived with Schwartz, we became friends. Back when you were literally wearing combat boots and skinny jeans. And I put up with that. And I and you, and you didn't have a dime to your name. You're driving a 1997 Honda Civic. And I loved you then when you had nothing and you got a little bit of money a little bar. I love when you went a little bar because he's like, dude, it's big bar. And a little band, even better. And and then this girl is going to act enamored with you. Like, oh my God. I'm like, ugh. Like, really? That's what you want? Like, really? Like, you just want someone to gas you up? That girl is searching for identity and men. And she has no identity of her own. Willing to stoop as so low as to fuck one of her best friend's life partners. And that's someone you think is a good person. You should be around. I was like, oh my God. I love this. One of many amazing monologues in this episode. I was like, this is, this is, I don't know what to do with this episode already. It was a good monologue. Like, if this were back in the day when I was doing like dramatic interpretation in high school competitions, <laughs> thank you. Hold on. I'll, I'll wait till you guys sit down. Sit Take down, a, guys. Like stop applauding. Take it very seriously. Yeah. yeah. Dramatic interp guys and humorous interp kicked ass at both. Thanks. Sit down. Sit down. This is not the time for applause. Um, this I would have probably chosen as one of my like Samuel French bookstore monologues to do mm. in a competition, but just do one. it as like Sally Field and like, steel magnolias like oh great i've been with you for nine years back when you were short for friends when you were literally like wearing combat boots and skinny jeans and didn't have a dime to your name driving a 1997 honda civic i loved you then when you had nothing and you got a little <laughs> bit of money a little bar a little bad and then this girl's got an acting nabbered like you with like Oh my God, you're so ah! <laughs> I think you would have gotten the job. Oh, I think I'm telling you. Look at my face. I look like Louie from uh, Real Housewives <laughs> of New Jersey. I was really feeling it. It actually looks like you're standing in front of his face, to be honest. Just looking at that image back the there, the colors. Alley. 
<laughs> so yeah. then Tom, just like he got, you know, pu pulled over by the police after curfew and he's been dragged home to mom again, smelling like weed. He's like, I don't know how it happened. It just did. Like, we became really good friends. Like, I was seeking something I wasn't getting here. And I know that's selfish. What the fuck, dude? See, you're not getting something there, so you go seek it somewhere else. You pay your tab at the first shitty restaurant first. Yeah. You don't just go sample from different restaurants for free the whole night, okay? Yeah, you don't, you don't order uh, Postmates into the restaurant. You don't like the food there. Oh, I guess some people really do do that. So either way, it's like it's so like this is this is the beginning of many ridiculous excuses from him about like basically blaming her. Like I wasn't getting something I wasn't getting here. Like if maybe I was getting something here, maybe I wouldn't cheat. Like that is the implicit thing there. So obnoxious. So he's like, I was being selfish. She's like, selfish is the nicest word you could use. He's like, it's horrible, but like. Me and Raquel became like really good friends. And Ariana's like, well, I'm gonna let you do it. You're a better screamer than I am. I'm gonna let you do Ariana's line. I don't here. give a fuck about fucking Raquel. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and so she's screaming at him, Your friendship is fucking bullshit, Tom. And he's like, No, it's not. No, it's not. And I was like, What? Now you're gonna defend your relationship with Raquel? Are you yeah, fucking please. kidding me? Dude, sit there and shut up. Just shut up. What are you doing? And then to do you remember when this came out that they shot all day at Tom's house? The first scene with Ariana and Tom that they shot and that Tom left and was threatening to walk off the set uh, and yelling at the producers, telling them that that scene was trying to make him look like they were trying to make him look bad at the scene. I mean, what a fucking narcissist. What? Just, just like murder. all your words murder are going to be raining. used against It's raining you. murder. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's like, no, we have a real friendship. It's like, dude, just like, you know what? Even if it's real, just like Ixnay on the Akel Ray, please. So Ariana's like, this is, it's disgusting. It's bullshit. And he's like, oh, you know everything. Hey, everybody, this person knows everything. She's like, your friendship with Raquel is disgusting. And he goes, well, guess what? It's fucking real because she treats me with fucking respect. Something I haven't gotten from you in a long time, sir. Do you want to do you want to emerge from this this year alive? This is ridiculous. What are you this is I could not believe he said that. That he was again blaming Ariana. She doesn't respect him enough, which is but Raquel does. Raquel's a fan. Yep. So she's like, oh, okay. So I'm the scapegoat. I'm the one to blame. You had to fuck my fucking friend. Okay, I see. And he goes, it wasn't about sex. It was a connection where we were both respecting each other and giving each other confidence. Oh my God, I don't fuck Janelle, the Weight Watchers counselor. Okay. Yes, it was about the sex, you idiot. If it wasn't about the sex, this wouldn't be a problem. You would have just been friends with her, which is what she thought that you were. It's not about See, the sex. Fucking around isn't on you isn't really about the fucking. It's that she respected me. Yeah, well, you're taking someone who's completely insecure and an emotional idiot and kind of taking an advantage in a way and being like creepy and gross and giving her the attention she needs and manipulating her all the way around and then fucking her in your girlfriend's bed while she, you are so fucking gross, dude. You're nasty. I can't believe that this is his defense. I'm still shocked. It's terrible. His ter his defense is one of his many terrible defenses. So um, then Sandoval's like, he's like, well, you know, Ariana, this relationship, it's just, it's just, it wasn't the same thing to be separated all the time. Like you go your way all the time. I go my way. We have no sex life. Like it just lost its mojo. Like no, you can't. Says, you... I lost all my mojo. I had no I sex life. I lost my mojo. It's like, you're the one who started up a cover band and started touring. That's you actively going away from your long-term girlfriend and your shiplap house to be with a child orchestra in Agora Hills next to like a, a yogurt land. Also, why are you talking like Austin Powers, dude? <laughs> Get your mojo, baby. Yeah. Baby. <laughs> I thought you were saying I was. I was like, was I? Because no. no. <laughs> that that's that is possible. I could just no. break into like I a love British you. accent. No, I love you. I'm not talking to you like that. I'm talking to Tama Sandoval. 
So uh, Ariana is like, oh, okay, yeah, okay, I get it. So fuck my friend. So go fuck my friend and get your mojo back, sure. And he's like, <laughs> but once I turned 40, I was like, this can't be the rest of my life. And she goes, Tom, that's normal. And he goes, I know. She's like, and that's why couples go to therapy together, which we could have, you know? We both have things. You either go through them together or you break up. And he's like, but I tried to talk to you, too. Like, the past few months, I the amount of times I got an apology out of you, like, I can count count on one hand and she's like uh the last few months you were fucking my friend the whole time so i know i just also love by the way like once i turned 40 i realized this can't be the rest of my life you know being in a committed relationship with like a super hot girl who's like totally chill and supportive of all my like quixotic impulses um being successful being famous being in a nice house i just i can't live that way i could not i'm just like this can't be the rest of my life Oh my God. So he's like, I tried, I tried talking to you. And uh, she's like, uh, yeah, you were fucking my best friend. And he goes, yeah, well you put pressure on me to stay in the relationship. Cause two weeks ago I was like, Ariana, I want to end things. And you literally told me I'm not letting you break up with me and you'll have to force me out of this. Okay. First of all, you were already fucking her best friend then. Yes. Okay. And you had you had also waited for the cameras and everything else to stop rolling and every wuss thing you could have done the whole time, you know? And she's like, well, if that was true, then you should have never been in my bed after that night. And he's like, but I felt bad. And he's like, she's like, oh, you felt bad? Tom, you have to end it. You have to leave. He goes, but at that point, it was too late. She's like, you were already fucking Raquel. What are you talking about? He goes, it wasn't that. Goes, it wasn't that. It wasn't that. That you were like fucking someone else. It was like not part of the reason why you weren't here. Goes, it's not that easy. I mean, like, it's just like, he really is a child who got like, who knocked over his mom's vase and is like trying it to is. explain his way it's out of like it. It's like one in the morning and he's just stumbled in and his mom is standing there in his bathrobe with like a rolled up newspaper ready to whoop him. You know? It's yes. Like, what? I told you I was going out. <laughs> And he's like, it's just, it's not just like somebody's like choking my ego that this happened. It's not about the looks. It's like, it came from like something much deeper, like Raquel's deep, fascinating personality with so many layers and interesting insights on life. I mean, as time went on, we became like a support system for each other, you know, like I would sing a terrible song and she'd be like, that sounded good. I was like, I needed that. And she's like, don't you dare talk to me about a deep connection. And he's like, I know you don't want to hear it. She goes, just shut up. You're disgusting. Go say it to her. When are you going to see her next? Are you guys going to kiss and hug and talk about your deep connection? He's like, I don't know. I'm like, I can't. Like, how are you even sitting there having this conversation? She's sitting there (laughs) trying to, like, have a real conversation with this guy. And he's just like, it's your fault. It's almost like like, he's like, okay, I forgive you. He's like, listen. I forgive you from try for trying to keep me from true love. I forgive yeah. you, Ariana. Can but, I please make you a latte while you think about what you've done to me? It's almost like he's like very insistent that like that this is a deep thing, almost to say like I know I betrayed you and I betrayed your trust, but it was for something like really deep and wonderful, so that makes it okay because I wasn't getting that here. It's like it's so disrespectful. So Ariana's like, well, why don't you just say no? I was ride or fucking die for you. I had, and I had her back as well. And the fact that she continues to smile in my face while also smiling on FaceTime with you is one of the most god-awful, disgusting things I've ever heard of. And Sienna was like, oh, I'm sorry you had to see that. She's like, oh. she's like, she's like, why don't you be sorry that you ever fucking did it, you moron? And then we see pictures of them all at Halloween. Was it these three at Halloween or was it Logan? I think I couldn't tell because the guy was dressed as the Hamburglar. And I was like, oh, "Oh my God, never fucking be with someone. I like all the signs were there. You know what I mean? So then Sandoval's like, sorry, you had to see that. She's like, why aren't you sorry you did it? Like, why are you sorry that I saw the video? Like, this guy, mm-hmm. how do you yeah. talk to this? I don't know how she's even still sitting She's, there. like, losing I her mind. I would have just lit I'm everything on mind. fire, personally. So then she has kind of a little, another monologue where she's uh, where she's crying. And she's like, uh, you know, I regret every moment I defended you, supported you, and stood up for you. You're worth nothing. And I want you to feel that deep in your soul. And I want you to hear that out of the mouth of the one fucking woman that stood by you and loved you and was ready to hear 
uh, ready with, to build the rest of my life around you. Hear my words and know that's how I feel about you. And he's like trying to cry to get the victim points, but he can't. So he's just like doing his squinty eyes off to the distance. Like, yeah, I'm really upset right now. I can't believe Ariana's trying to stand in between me and my true love. Raquel. <laughs> A broomstick that can beat it in pageants. So Ariana's like literally came to her first reunion dressed as a Swiffer. And uh, <laughs> from that moment, I was in love with the effortless clean she brought to my kitchen. <laughs> I couldn't resist her. Literally, she has so much static cling. So Ariana's like, I regret ever loving you. Any last words before we never speak again? <laughs> Which I, I just love. I just love like a cold, like a knife that comes out cold, just goes right into the abdomen. <laughs> He's like, don't. I never thought this would happen. I thought we'd be together forever. Like you were sleeping with someone else. This is not like fate intervened and like sent you guys to different continents. You fucked Raquel. Yeah. It's not even only fuck. Fucked her. It's like you have yeah, you're in a relationship, a relationship with somebody. You fucking nut. So she's, uh, she starts crying and she's like, I would have followed you anywhere and I would have changed. Well, I know. But, you know, now he has a new fan. That's all he wants, you know? Mm -hmm. Just someone following him around with the phone app open. That's all did, he wants. Did you see on Instagram someone, I apologize for the account that I don't remember the name, someone took a screenshot from um, like an early season, season two, when he was breaking up with Kristen, and he literally said the caption, it's like my very presence annoys her which of course was the the phrase he was using all last week i mean this guy really doesn't change no he waits until he's cheating and then he makes it your fault i mean it's classic it's classic um and you know and it's like you were saying earlier it's not even that fun because he's such a cliche you know it's just like we've watching this i thought you know this is so sad uh to see on a show where you like these characters so much and stuff but it's also like kind of boring in a way because He's just such a fucking cliche and he's not even good at it, you know? So yeah. then the piano's tinkling and the song goes, I love turned into rust and broken heart to dust, but at least we can drive. Hmm. Beautiful. Beautiful melody to underscore this moment. And we're here at Schwartz's apartment, which is honestly, it's a style. Like, I don't. Disgusting. I know not everyone. I know not everyone is like a clean freak, but like at least be like uh, observant to certain basic levels of hygiene. It is just like you're, it's sir. Disgusting. You are forty. There's cameras in your home. You know There's what cameras. I mean? If they just like showed up, like if it was just like cops, you know, and they just happen to show up and start shooting, and you had to sign off on it later. That's one thing, but. Babe, you knew the cameras were coming. Clean, clean yeah. the house. Just do a little bit. So Sandoval comes over and he looks like a low level con artist. So he looks like he's someone in a crime movie that the police have to interview to find out where the hideout is. He just shows up looking. He's wearing the basic, the basic outfit they give you in Grand Theft Auto. You know? Yeah. So Schwartz like the low oh. level criminal who hasn't done enough crime yet to earn the high level shit. It's just your black jeans, your black <laughs> shirt, and your your little leather jacket and your cheesy haircut. Yeah, you're like stage one. So uh, Schwartz like there he is, the most reviled man in America, dude. This is very bad. I know. Like I think there's bacteria growing on your floor. No, with you, not with my my apartment. So then Sandoval starts like sobbing, sobbing. It's like, fake, <laughs> fake, fake sobbing. I'm sorry, dude. I'm sorry. Which is hilarious that he can do that with uh Sam uh, with Schwartz, but not Ariana at all. So yeah. uh he's like, Well, I'm not gonna beat you while you're down. He goes, dude, I'm so sorry. No tear, the air cry. And uh, he plays it like he plays the guitar. And so uh, Sandoval's like, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. So Schwartz is like, listen, I just want you to know, like, this isn't good. Like, we went from 4.8 stars on Yelp to one star. And then Priorities. these reviews, you guys, <laughs> oh, my God. Burn this place down, collect the insurance, and give it to Ariana. I like this one, which may have actually been posted before Scandoval. Found a cockroach in my pasta. Hashtag not about the pasta. <laughs> that had nothing to do with any of this. <laughs> that was just a general like uh, update on what that restaurant's like. A disgrace to the strip mall that it lives in. Red Lobster had better decor. 
<laughs> Actually, hey. whoever wrote that has clearly not been to a Red Lobster in a while because they've made an effort, and dare I say, their decor is um, enticing. It's charming and lovely. It Hello. is. And what I part am. of like what what part of a captain's wheel mounted on the wall does not seem absolutely delightful to you? I would like Red to know who lobster, that monster was. I'd like to call it Fed Lobster because that's where I'm going to be fed. Okay, that place is <laughs> delightful, and how I, dare you say something about that place? I yeah, please do not bring Red Lobster into Scandaval. Okay, Red Lobster yeah. is a sacred place, and um, I I love it so much. I once uh, had an adult birthday there. So how about that? So um yeah, Captain uh, Lobster didn't go fuck some aged out pageant loser, you know. I will like, say on. though, it was an ultimate seafood fest that probably got Sandoval into this mess. But that being said, um, I do have to say uh also Schwartz say opening up the scene being like, This is bad, this is so bad. And he's what he's referring to is the Yelp reviews going down and not the fact like that you cheated and lied on Ariana, that you broke her heart, that you like no, probably so gave her trust issues for life. It's that they got Yelp reviews. They got low, low Yelp reviews, which yeah. were notable anyway. Well, it's, a, it's that he got caught, you know, and it and it hurt their business. So Sandoval's wiping his air tears, and uh, Schwartz is like, I exhausted my soul for Schwartz and Sandy's. I put everything in it. And then we see the clip of Katie going, I mean, this place broke us, and it almost broke you, and it did break me. So was it worth it, Tom? Was it worth it? And he's like, they cut out the part where he's like, oh, hey, how are you? Thanks for coming. Come on over. No, we're not talking about anything. <laughs> you want some seafood nachos? Wow. So Schwartz is like, can you maybe do a pose to explain to people that I'm not complicit in this? Like, you came to me. You confided in me. I said, Tom, out of respect for what you have with Ariana, you have to tell her, can you just like. Can you like make sure people aren't mad at me? I'm like, really, this is your priority. I mean, like, I understand it does like legitimately if you're in a business with someone and someone is being like an asshole and stupid and doing making terrible decisions that's impacting your business, that does suck. But also, like, you've had several months to take care of this. So you're like, letting them sorry. fuck in your house. What are you talking about? Like, isn't his place like their fuck pad or something? That's what it sounded like. It sounds like it. Yeah. So shut up like you didn't know. And yeah, you're going to get the blowback too because you were enabling this shit. And no, you didn't say anything. And if you did, it was just like two weeks ago after this shit had already been going on forever and you're doing this bullshit story trying to cover for him the entire season so he didn't have to do anything. you know. And I get that you're best friends. So you don't have to necessarily blow the whistle. But the fact that you were like encouraging it and enabling it with your apartment, fuck you, dude. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve whatever you're getting, sir. Yeah, so Sandoval's like, um, he's like, I know, I just, I wanted to tell her, and every time I wanted to tell her, I just got this vibe that she, like, just didn't want to know. Oh, oh, you know what, uh, Ronnie, by the way, I, I take this all back. If I had known that there was a vibe that Sandoval was picking up on, I, I, you know what, he's totally in the right. How could I, how could I even criticize him? There was a vibe. How, of course he can't, of course he can't break this up and do the right thing. He felt a vibe. If Tom felt vibes knowing that like people didn't want to hear something he would never have sung in the first place <laughs> okay you don't have you don't feel vibes tom you don't he would have them. fed fig newtons to the child orchestra already they're just like is it snack time yet so, so schwartz is like i have to sit down because my world just got turned upside down man so okay so now he's gonna make himself the victim <laughs> in all of this which he which kind, kind of funny. like he kind of is the victim in all of this but he's just as bad and i'm not gonna sit here and pretend that he's not you know, so Sandoval's like, well, me and Raquel, we have a really deep connection. You know, after guys night, the laundry on. And then we see a clip of the girls coming uh, and him being like, whoa, Raquel. <laughs> and then he tells us nothing happened that night. But the next day was like, see you next Tuesday or something. And then Raquel and I went to the Abbey and we were just taking some shots. And then we like just kissed. So you weren't with other people at the Abbey. That was a lie. And also Allie just jumped a whole lot by being the first one to call this out. She broke this yeah. story, guys. Yeah, Allie broke this story. And just because a lot of other news outlets picked it up does not mean that the original reporter shouldn't get credit. <laughs> Allie for Pulitzer. <laughs> uh, also, just as a reminder that these people um, should be going out and about and partying and getting drunk all the time because otherwise they miss good shit like this. So, um, well, it's also, it's also what it's also really another kick in the balls that he did this in public that they're just doing this in public right next door to I their know. job 
you know? So like, blatant. They don't give a fuck. Because you know, you know there's like, like, there's like, there's like Vanderpump Rules Bravo fans that go to Sir all the time. They go to the Abbey afterwards. Yes, we are them. So I think that it looks like at this point he was trying to get caught, right? I mean, it looks like they were being as blatant as possible to get caught. And Ariana was like refusing to hear it because she didn't want to break up and nobody would say anything or whatever. But this is, this seems like it's asking to be caught so he didn't have to do the hard work of the breakup and actually yeah, having to have quite you possibly. Know, the courage to say something. Because the Abbey, dude, making out <laughs> at the Abbey. By the way, also like, that's like that's our space, okay? Can you take your can you take your your heteronormative scandal to another place? Yeah. <laughs> so then he's like he's like yeah, and then we kissed at the Abbey, and I felt something in that moment that I haven't felt in a long time. I'm like, was it a proper note? Did you hit a proper note? Was that what you felt? <laughs> no, you heard music that's actually on key for the first time in a long. <laughs> was time. it an acting role? Was it an acting role you felt? So uh, he goes on with his, we've been growing apart and it's been going on for like five years. His whole, I can't, his whole song and dance. He does this the whole hour and a half. Mm -hmm. Then we see coked out Jax and Jax is like, like, I don't even believe like, like their relationship. Like, it's like a facade. You know what I mean? Like, I just don't even believe it. It's like a facade. So can we, then can we not have, can we not commission Jax for, uh, or uh, as a character witness to your side of <laughs> Tom's handball. Can't we do better than that? Okay, that's already shows how flimsy your case is. Yeah. So, yeah. So then Sandoval. Doesn't I feel like 20 years ago, too. It was only 2019. Oh God. But seeing Jax's coked out old face at 2019, it just seems like, God, it's like looking at pictures of like when the Hindenburg happened. <laughs> it's like, this is history. <laughs> this is really old history. I don't think I want to remember. So So much has happened. So much has happened in the world and in Vanderpump Rules that it just, it does. He's it's like watching Charlie Chaplin. So Sandoval, yeah, he's like, yeah, I'm in a relationship with like zero intimacy. And like the only time I can get off is like when I watch porn in the bathroom and like I went into therapy and like, I don't know, like that didn't turn me on either. Like, I don't know what to do. Have you tried masturbating in therapy and it not working? I mean, God, <laughs> if you can't splooge to a doctor, who are you supposed to be able to splooge to, bro? But the good news is my therapist is playing trombone in my band now. So it's like pretty cool. <laughs> to be fair, my therapist is a 17 year old, you know, high school student, but that's, that's neither here nor there. So Schwartz is like, well, that's all relatable, but you just had so many opportunities to sit with Ariana and talk about it. Do what I try to do. <laughs> and he's like, and then last week I had, I gave you an opportunity when I said it's time to tell her. Cause if this comes out, he's like, I know. <laughs> Um, so he said, you know, he knows, but he wanted to be on the same page as Raquel. He didn't want to just disrespect Raquel by outing her at the wrong time. God forbid he disrespects forbid. someone that he loves. You know, what a stand up guy. <laughs> I, I know, exactly. And so then, um, and then he was like, yeah, no. And then like, you know, like nothing happened with me and Raquel until like the Life is Beautiful Festival. And Ariana never even asked, okay? Like I said I was going to Schwartz's and all she had to do was follow me to see that I'm not. I'm like, what is the what is the meaning of this this logic? So like it's Ariana's fault that she wasn't suspicious enough of Yes, you. yes. He's saying she should have been suspicious and checking up on me and literally following me to find out what I was doing. Mm. Like I've made it so obvious for her. And she didn't even bother to follow she me didn't around. Care and stop me. Yeah. She didn't care enough. Yeah. Didn't care enough to be possessive. She actually trusted me. How awful. Yeah. So then, you know, well, because with Kristen, he had the whole opposite gaslight where he could say, Oh, she's just fucking psycho, where he makes you psycho and makes you start questioning him. And then you start following him around and looking through his phone. And then he could say, See, I told you she was psycho, but it didn't work because Ariana was just like, Why would I follow Tom? Oh, he's probably Love gonna do on. something boring you know and i do not want to be a part of it so i will not i've got to I, i've got to catch up on episodes 83 to 107 on love <laughs> island season six yeah <laughs> uh, so he's like uh, so schwartz is like i mean i don't think you really want to put the responsibility on her right i mean oh god like now people are upset with me i'm canceled just for knowing you i love that it's all about him this fucking loser and then Schwar uh sandoval's like oh yeah well just stay off social media bro it's like you you suck you deserve oh, each other are you advocating you some self-restraint 
Are you, you're advocating some restraint, sir? Is that what I'm hearing from you? Oh, okay. I get no, it. It's just saying fuck you, like for even complaining, like this is a problem for you. Just stay off social media. This isn't even about you. This is about me. You guys are both so selfish. You deserve the sad, washed up life you're entering into. Enjoy this next chapter because I'm sure going to enjoy it from my couch. Yeah. So now we go back to Ariana's house and um, she has now gathered the gays. We know where she's at that stage of grieving where the gays have gathered. So she's got Logan. She's got Brad. Meredith is back, by the way, because Meredith like fully vanished into thin air once that like initial Ariana and Sandoval argument started because Meredith was there and I don't know where she went. She just disappeared. But now she's back. And um, Logan's talking about like there's some apartments available uh, near him or in He's his so building. Funny. He goes, oh, my God, there are his honest phone. He goes. There are some apartments available in my apartment complex. Just like, no, I'm not yeah. fucking moving are, here. Are you yeah, are, are, well, I don't have are, enough glow sticks to make it through the hallway of your fucking apartment building, sir. Okay. She's like, yeah, uh, Lisa Vanderpump actually offered for me to stay there. So does your apartment building have miniature horses and a pool <laughs> and a panoramic view of L.A.? Just wanted to know. No? Okay, I'm going to stay with Lisa uh, Vanderbump. <laughs> so, Sheena comes in. She's like, I brought some supplies. And I didn't see what they were. Did you? What were they? Rosé. It was basically but, just like rosé. Two boxes. It was like two little boxes or something. Oh. Two boxes. It was probably like um, collector's edition of the Uber remix of Good as Gold. Because singles. Uh, <laughs> a singles corner. So, um, they Sheena's like, <laughs> <laughs> she's like oh my god i'm so sorry you don't deserve any of that you do not uh, did anybody bring me something like why isn't anybody bringing me something like it's a huge deal to me you guys i'm wearing my bucket hat of mourning oh my god so, so she um, does this thing when she starts crying which i forgot because i don't think i've seen it for so long but i forgot that sheena sucks in her bottom lip and then crosses her eyes when she starts crying it looks like <laughs> <that>. <laughs> she does do that it's well, cute. the reason why you haven't seen her crying recently is because I'm having like literally the happiest moment of my life. Like I'm so happy right now. There's no reason to cry. I like I'm gonna cry because I'm happy, but it's like a different kind of cry. I'll have She's a like, talk. It's not ways. even like it's not even like this is like a whoops. We kissed one time when we were on after the Coachella. This is like a full blown love affair. Okay, and they're like yeah, <laughs> full on. And then Katie comes over and they hug and cry. And yeah. Sheena goes, um, here's some wine. I think we can agree to put aside our shit. Uh, for now, okay? And Katie's like, so, yeah, it doesn't really matter today. Okay, but could you watch from that balcony? Yeah, I still hate you. I hate you too, bitch. Please die. I I just want you to know that, like, I have restored your access to the members-only pool, so I feel like we put this, be this beef away. You are now a preferred member of this pool, so congratulations. <laughs> you now have access at the buffet, so you're welcome. So Katie's like, uh, yeah, Katie actually says this is the first time she's even seen Sheena because I think that like all the group events it didn't even occur to me that Sheena wasn't, they did not overlap because then Sheena had COVID for some of the ones towards the end of the season or something like that. So then Ariana starts just telling them about like how she found the screen recording on the phone and Ariana's like, uh, yeah, like he was at Schwartz's doing that. And Katie's like, he was at Schwartz's? Like you can get a boner with all those like crusty socks hanging around? Really? Wow. At least someone at Schwartz's can get a boner. Am I right? <laughs> so Ariana's like, yeah. And that's when I called Raquel. And I was like, you need to like tell me what the fuck and when did this start? And she was like, after the girls trip. And I was like, you mean right after Charlotte died? I'm like, oh, wow. This just gets better and better. Yeah. The night you're, just... you went home because your dog, you had to put your dog down. Tom's banging somebody. So she and he says, didn't... yeah. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I'm sorry. No, I was going to say that like he he left, he lost his keys. So then she had to actually let him into the house. And he, after he just had sex with Raquel, she in, lets him into the house. In her car. She says, yeah, he's, he, first he said they just kissed, but then she kept on him and he admitted that they fucked in her car that night. God. And she so just face is just like, ah! <laughs> Uh, so then um, Sheena is talking. She has her monologue now. She's like, the other night, I was I had so much rage. I had so much rage in me. It's like it was enchilada night, and there was not one corn tortilla in the grocery store. I've never felt something <laughs> like that again. And I shoved her cow so hard away from me, and she, like, uh, just ran back to my hotel room, and I don't know if my nail caught her when I pushed her or what, but she turned her head into the fence or the wall or whatever the fuck it was, the moat. From the mountain, from the hill. I mean, I don't even know it was. I don't know if we were in a swimming pool or what. But then she called Swartz and she was like, Sheena punched me! Sheena punched me! 
Now here, uh, I would like to express something to the jury. May it please the court that it is scientifically impossible for me to form an actual fist because all of my nails would break. And if I make a fist this way, my thumb would break. If I make a fist this way, my nails would break. My hands literally don't work. I don't understand fists. The only hand shape I can really make is just like all my fingers out going, ha! She's so also, ridiculous. She literally goes, um, I'd just like to say to the jury that it's physically impossible for me to make fists. And she makes two fists <laughs> right in the camera. I, <laughs> I also love the idea of Sheena <sighs> shoving Raquel, according to her, shoving Raquel and then running all the way back to her hotel, like running through the like the streets of New York City, like ah! so <laughs> <laughs> through the lobby of the hotel, up the elevator. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh so katie's like yeah well um i feel like tom schwartz knew too because he made a comment at BravoCon and it stuck with me and you remember the sweatshirt situation and so she tells us that at BravoCon, raquel wore a tom tom hoodie with like basically nothing on underneath and at the time i thought it was about her and schwartz but then i was like she's a fangirl following you guys around like a groupie and he was like she's not around for me trust me <laughs> and yeah that's pretty bad and i do remember when that happened you remember when she's like oh god raquel's just a fan girl and everyone's like you mm -hmm. leave her alone she's just wearing a tom tom sweater because she's nice <laughs> katie's like i feel like i want to draw blood she's like well i want to i want to break that penis float that's up there and so they're like oh my god let's do it logan's like this is my moment i've been wanting to do this for four years okay sheena I will give you $100 if you break the penis flute. She's like, no, I physically can't because my fists, like I can't make fists. I actually can't clutch a penis flute. It's just physically impossible for me. <laughs> so Logan does it. He breaks it over his, and he is so proud when he gets it in one. He's so delighted. <laughs> He's so like, oh my God, Ariana's I did it. Like, oh my God, I really didn't want you to do that. And they start laughing. <laughs> so then um, we go to James and Allie's apartment and he's typical James kind of over love bombing her. He's dropped something. He's like, babe, babe, I'm just so nervous. Oh, babe, you're so beautiful. Help me, you're so cute. I'm just so nervous. I'm a nervous wreck, Ellie. Oh, give me a kiss. You're so gorgeous. So gorgeous, aren't you? It just scares me. It scares me how people can do this, you know? Who is so close to me? I'm not even mad about Raquel. I'm mad about Tom Sandoval. You gorgeous, gorgeous creature. Come here, come here. Let me pet you with my nose. Tom Sandoval is the definition of a backstabber. I always kind of looked up to him in a sense, you know, especially with my trust issues with Raquel. And then we see unseen footage of like a few years ago with Sandoval telling um, James, dude, you gotta know, you gotta know and have enough trust in her to know that she's not gonna do anything shitty, okay? She would not betray you, man. And I'm not gonna betray you either, dude. So J now James is crying back in the interview and he's like, it's just, it was just like a real waste of a friendship. I like, I threw the other way. I like, oh, you're such a fucking piece of shit, bro. You're such a fucking piece of shit. Uh. So there's a knock on the door. Do you remember when and... he fucked Kristen, when he started fucking Kristen, when he was going to start that band with Tom Sandoval? Oh, yeah, that's true, too. I know that was a long time ago. I'm not saying it's the same thing. It's just this show. The history of this show is so great. I'm sorry this to show. cough. I swallowed something wrong. <laughs> it's you okay. Know? You'd I... think I'd, I'd have it down by now, but apparently not. No, well, you know, on this show, there's a lot of issues with swallowing, apparently. So, I mean, band of pub rules, of course. So, uh, uh, so now uh, there's a Lala and Kitty show up, and then James like, "You are Pellegrino," and Lala's like, "How are you, Jameson? Um, I feel like there's a lot of info, a lot of info happening right now." And he's like, "Well, so you know, I'm drinking at four thirty in the afternoon, so there's that." It's like that's not shocking, James. Why are you acting like that? Some like <laughs> sign. I know. So he's like, well, you know, you know, my anger about Schwartz is out the window because now I found out that Sandoval and Raquel have been fucking the whole time. And Lala's mm -hmm. like, there was a time where I was like, I think we're looking at the wrong times here. Mm -hmm. And then we see a clip of Lala being like, I think Sandoval has a thing for Raquel. Yeah. And uh, yeah, her whole like, that's her redemptive moment that she was like sniffing it out and everything. And she's like, you know, he did this to Kristen and he did it to Ariana's. And like, guess what? He got bored with Ariana's and he wants to be a sloppy drunk and she's fun. And he got off on the fact that he couldn't sneak around. Yeah. And do you think this is the first time that he's been creeping around? 
Because no one chooses right off the bat, and I'm gonna cheat. I was like, "Oh no, Lala's oh, going. Lala's starting this shit. I can't." Wish Lala, she does it. So she I know. Going off, and she's like, "No one chooses right off the bat, so I'm gonna cheat." So my girl was a friend of hers, and his obsession with pickleball, so making a dementia-addled Bruce Willis perform a terrible movie while banging two girls on the crosswalk in Nashville. Motherfuckers! And they're like, "Okay, reel it in, laws. That's Rand. You're projecting. Yeah. Come back, Lala. Come she's back, like, Lala." A few years ago, I heard rumors that Tom and Billy Lee like go off and they do whatever that they do. And then we see unseen footage at a reunion with Chris and like, uh, Jesse Montana said that you guys went off and fucked. And Lala's like, yeah, you know what? We need to open that case back up because it went cold and I don't think it need to be cold no more. I'm like, okay, you're from Salt Lake City, Lala, come on. You need to stop, Lala, okay? Please, <laughs> it's humiliating. It's embarrassing to literally everybody in America. Just stop. She's like, that case don't need to go cold, okay? <laughs> like, oh, no. How does she get away with that? She's like, cold cases be cold. I'm like, okay, you know what, Lala? Okay, okay stop it. Yeah, please. <laughs> stop it, I'm Lala. humiliated. So uh, James is like, you know what we're going to do? Let's call Raquel right now. Like, oh, my God, James. He's like, yeah. Or right, I'm going to you guys face him. OK, fine. I'll call her. So he calls her and Allie's like, I'm going to the kitchen. She's mortified. And Allie <laughs> literally spends a scene like hiding behind the counter and like looking over the counter or like she's yes. behind. Then they cut to her and she's like behind a cabinet door looking out like, oh, my God. So he calls her. It's, by the way, I like that she's like, I'm going to the kitchen as if the kitchen is not five feet away. She's I like, know, okay, I'm here right now. There. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm not a part of this because I'm standing two feet away now. So, I've declared which part of the apartment I'm in, even though I'm the so same So he calls place, her yes. and Raquel answers, which <laughs> Raquel like literally is the dumbest person. So she's, she's like, very dumb. hey, what's up? And he goes, oh, well, how do you feel about what you've done? Fatty, fat, McFat, fat. And she's like, <laughs> Well, I feel real shitty about it, I guess, now. Like, basically, now that I got caught, I feel shitty about it because it's all over the news. Yeah. And so he's like, so you incentive on an item now, Raquel. Hmm? 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 Raquel, are you an item? Hmm? No. Oh, really? How about losing every single person who thought you who you thought you liked Los Angeles? Okay. Did you fuck them too? Okay. And she's like, well, yeah, this is definitely eye-opening, which I don't like. It's eye-opening for us, not for you. And she's like, oh, well, your really? eyes being opened. You were the one, you were the one doing the sneaky shit. Oh, well, you know what? You lied everyone's face. You done diddly fucked yourself over at all. <laughs> Great use of diddly by James. Great done use diddly. of diddly done. You diddly done fucked yourself over. <laughs> like all the people you were building friendship with, you trashed it for Sandoval. Stinky little cock cock. Like a stinky <laughs> little 40 year old cock cock. Seriously, Raquel. Stinky and faulty. That's hilarious. Really. <laughs> and Ali's just like peeking behind like a box of Girl Scout cookies. Like, oh my God, please stop this. <laughs> She's like, excuse me, I'm going to step into the pantry. She just hides behind a box. She's so... like hiding behind one dried piece of rigatoni. <laughs> like, oh my God, James, stop. <laughs> I can hear it all the way in the pantry. So James is like, you're not the brightest chick, are oh, you? Let's not dilly-dally around the bush. The smartest thing you ever did was creep around with Tom Tom. Yes, I have said dilly and dilly-dally all in the span well, of see, 20 seconds. Like he's, he's telling this girl off in like nursery rhymes. He's like, dilly done fucked yourself, didn't you? Let's not dilly-dally about that, slappy sloppy. Smartest you thing you've ever done is that little cocky cock, 40-year-old stinky cocky cock. Oh, what, you're going to go to Piccadilly Circus and done dilly go dilly dallying around over there? It's like, okay. Okay. Uh, but it was funny. He's like, the smartest thing you've ever done is sneak around with Tom Sandoval for seven months. And then he tells us, judge me all you want. All right, James Kennedy has to strike back. Honestly, I've been going through a lot of emotions lately, and it's just what I needed. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> and he's like, boy, as he hangs up the phone. So now we go to Raquel's apartment, which we know that Raquel's been having an affair with Tom Sandoval because there's LED lights everywhere. Ellie, behind every chair, behind every nook and cranny, there's uh, an LED light. But also amusingly- the galaxy in, lights. No, but it was more than just galaxy lights, though, wasn't it? It was like lots of like pink highlights. Probably, but she light. definitely had the galaxy light going she in the hallway. There were like definitely know? like lasers going on. It, it was, was like galaxy, a planetary. It was a galaxy there. light, yeah. So she had that going on. Also, the reason this whole thing disturbs me, like I do- it's care it's kind of a careful way i guess i have to word it but she is emotionally like a child it's weird like she's in this 
we go to her apartment. She seems completely disconnected from everything. She's got squishmallows on her couch. Those are children's things you get at the grocery store. My niece used to collect them all, you know, like even she would be like, that bitch is immature. You know what I mean? Like they're, yeah. it's embarrassing. Like you're, you're having an affair with it. It's just, it's well, just the it whole thing like is creepy. And I think that's why Ariana's like, this is disgusting. Like you're taking this girl who's like literally a blank slate. You know what I mean? It's like somebody reformatted her drive or something. And that's what you're kind of with. It's just, yeah, she has like a, yeah, like like Raquel seems, yeah, something something is something is a little off there, uh, or I won't even say off. I'll just say that something is just not adding up. But um, uh, also though, in a typical Raquel fashion, I noticed for the first time it's probably been there all season long that across, over her sink, she just has a little sign that says "Say la vie." It's like, oops, oh well, say yeah. la vie. We're in an affair. Say la vie, because that's kind of her vibe in this. Oh wow, this is crazy. So they pour them, they they have like a shot together and everything. And Sandoval's like, huh, this is a shot to being in hell where we belong. She's oh, like, God. And meanwhile, he sits on his kitchen counter, like kind of with his legs open, like, well, I guess I'm just going to sit here and not expect you to come cuddle up and kiss me in this scene. I'm like, really? You two are going to have a fucking romantic scene now? What is, what are you doing? So she's like, well, actually, I don't really think that we belong in hell with her big fucking weird smile that she's doing this whole episode it's weird and she's like i think we're just like two people that like fucking were friends i uh, know you're two friends fucking okay <laughs> yeah and we started having feelings for each other and he goes yeah just like came out of left field like i tried to hook you up with schwartz i was like dude you're sleeping on like ariana you're an idiot she's fucking amazing and she goes um you just called me ariana so <laughs> He's like, um, can we turn off some lights here? I just want to pretend you're Ariana for a second. So Raquel's like, I will well, get I used to it. What would you rather he call you? Regret? Because <laughs> that's coming. That's all he's thinking about is Ariana right now. He's like, okay, here I am in a tiny apartment of a girl that has squishmallows on her couch and the galaxy light going off in the hallway because that's what we originally <laughs> bonded over. Me saying that Erdo. Tom also using a galaxy light. He was like, ugh. Right. Well, the rumors today are that Tom and uh, oh. Raquel have called it quits. But then Ariana oh, was on bad. Watch What Happens Live, and she was like, no, she just sent him a letter like yesterday. I got to the house. Yeah, the, so, day, uh, the day of uh, the season finale. They're so... Yeah. So Raquel's like, I had to tell my family about you. And it's like, oh, your mom probably fucking hates me, right? She goes, a little bit, but... They don't really care about what I do in my life, which is, I think, how I got to this place. But anyway, what about, she goes, she goes what about your family? And he's like, they love you. She goes, I love you, too. Goes, uh, I said they love you, but I love you, too. I was like, oh, God, are you guys really professing your love? You guys are saying I love you? Really? And then I was watching this with closed captioning because it's easier, you know, to take notes. And it says, stage directions, blows raspberry. What does that mean? Because it, it happens again later. Isn't a raspberry are... like a... Yeah. Isn't that when you like do that? Like Zerbert kind of on somebody? Like... Oh, a... oh, okay. I so think just any time... Raspberry. I don't know why... Yeah, I don't know why that's called a raspberry. I actually really resent that because I hate raspberries. So I don't... I was like, like she's like... blowing raspberries too? What is this girl up to? What's going on over here? So raspberries Raquel's in the wind. Like... So Raquel's like, I know we always said we wouldn't do this if it wasn't worth it, but I think the way it imploded, it's not like it's not ideal, Tom. It's not. And he's like, it's the stupidest fucking thing. Yeah. And then they, this is like their small talk, like how this is all exploded. Now they're going to fuck or something. And he goes, I can't kiss you because there's cameras. And she goes, I can't either. I can't either. You guys, this is not romantic, okay? What the hell is going on here? Is the, the camera person cringing? I want to see a reverse shot to see what this camera person is going through. What the hell? I think that I think they are definitely cringing. They have a reverse boner right now. Um, yeah, so they're like very close to each other, but not kissing. So they just wind up hugging. So the producer's like, "Why do you think this uh, happened?" And she goes, 
Um, I was just like curious oh, to know what she's it would doing be like. This, ben. She's smiling and like lifting her shoulders and shrugging. Like she's just found the love of her. She's like the star in her own romantic movie. She's like, oh, oh my God. Yeah. I was just like wondering like what it would be like to be physical with someone that you love. Cause I've only been in empty, sad relationships. And like, oh, I already I knew. I'm so I'd... sorry for you. I'm so, I feel so sad for you. This is her victim story. I just wanted for once to have sex with somebody that I loved. See, I've never had sex like that before. Have you ever had a man climax off key? It's so weird, but it was thrilling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so she's like, I should have completely removed myself from the situation, but I didn't have the willpower to not see him. And then he, she's like closing well, her eyes to him so he can see her, cut, her like little tiny cut that's in her eyebrow. <laughs> and he's like, cut. Let me see. Let me see your little cut. Also, he looks like he's got some kind of like a bruise or something on his eye. I hope it's from a stiletto being thrown at his <laughs> fucking face. I, I, no, I, I just hope one of those crows in the rain dive bombed him just out of revenge. <laughs> so, yeah. So they're like looking at it, She's like, it hurts. So he's like, yeah, well, Sheena was in the car, like on the car with like she said that Sheena called. Tom and Ariana were in the in a car. Sheena was on speaker talking about this thing. And but he had Raquel on speaker, too. And he said that Sheena was bragging like, I punched that bitch. I punched that bitch. Um, which, uh, hello, did you not understand her scientific Impossible. defense? Impossible. Impossible. <laughs> I couldn't even say punch my fish because if I said punched it, it would have really hurt the back of my tooth a lot because I like used to have a tongue running in there and that would like hurt the back of my tooth. I can't even physically form my mouth to say the word punch, even though I just said it. And People don't form. realize this. People don't realize this, that my hands are actually made of canvas. So they literally just flop in the direction of the breeze. So I can't even make a fist or direct them in any way. They just go in whichever way, I, which I hold them up to the fan. And hopefully they just align in the way that I need to pick up a fork or something like that. And she's like, oh, yeah, she definitely did punch me. <laughs> and I'm like, I took it like a champ. And then I was like, is this my karma? Mm -hmm. I'm, I mean, look, I'm never going to say someone should get hit. No one should hit you. You know, I mean, I think that's crossing the line. But yes, that's your karma. What the fuck do you think it is? <laughs> It's, a, it's called it's your consequences how about that it's your consequences yeah. so then uh because karma sounds like you deserved it where consequences mean you really deserved it okay so then um she's like am i oh so then okay so this is where it gets good because she's still smiling and acting really fucking weird so then she's like you know um all i have is you and my family and my sister i'm like that's actually a lot that's more than a lot of people you know but she's like but i you know, I am starting to question whether even you have my best interest at heart. That's questionable. Like, am I really going to put my life on the line for someone who would cheat on someone that they love so much? <laughs> He's like, LOL. <laughs> well, well, ding, that's the smartest thing you've ever said since you've been yeah. here. Congratulations. And I, and I think we know the answer to that, which is, yes, he will do that. And Sandoval yeah. is like, of course, I would never do this. If there wasn't something here, now let's just lower those lights a little bit more. So I just don't even see your face. Okay. So Sandoval's like, I can't predict the future. Okay. Like, who's to say? Like, maybe they'll work out. Like, things will work out like Raquel and I. Like, maybe they won't. Like, when I kissed Raquel, like, I felt hope. Okay. Like, your best days aren't behind you. You no longer have to be in a relationship with just like, a girl with a banging body with an amazing face, super great personality. Who's like smart. And the only one that like everyone just seems to really like on the show, those terrible dark days are over. And he goes, maybe I'm not washed up. Like, LOL. Uh, not, not as much as you're about to be. Don't so you have then to be Raquel... somewhere to be washed up. Like, don't you have to be in the water to get washed up? Right. Like, I feel like that's, it's implying he was like an A-list star at some point. Which oh, he he's going to be one of these his whole life. He's like, oh, yeah, when I was on tour. <laughs> uh, so Raquel uh, Raquel says we fucked up. He goes, yeah, we did fuck up. But he's doing that like flirtatious thing where he's like, what the fuck? And she's like, coulda, shoulda, woulda. And he goes, woulda, coulda, shoulda. And she's like, oh, yeah. No, she had it right. Oh, fuck, this you're correcting somebody now, you idiot. This is the whole this is the whole crux of it. He wants to be the one to correct somebody now, you know? And he's wrong. 
there's also like I don't feel like there's any real strong way to say those that, that expression. Like I think whoever comes out with it, whoever says like coulda, woulda, shoulda, woulda, shoulda, coulda, whatever, it's you just go coulda, with it. Woulda, actually, they both got it wrong. It shoulda, coulda, but woulda. You just I would never correct someone. I just would be like, okay, that's the order that you chose to make that expression, and I will move forward. But he's he's with somebody on purpose that he can now correct because he is sick of being corrected. You go, Tom. It's Tom's big day. I'm going to correct someone now. You're saying <laughs> woulda, coulda, shoulda wrong. Shoulda, woulda, coulda, you fucking. Okay, so then um, Raquel's like, if we could do it over. And he goes, I would do a lot of things over. Like you. Over and over. And it's like, and then it goes to black and it says, After filming this scene, Raquel turned off her phone and was not seen or heard from for weeks. <laughs> uh, so now we go over to Villa Rosa and Ariana comes over and Lisa's like, Darling, I'm up here. I'm like, Could you go down and greet her in their foyer, please, Lisa? For crying out loud, this lady has just gone through like a traumatic breakup. Can't you go downstairs? So I've just Ariana posed poofy for the scene, darling. Please come up. Yeah. <laughs> so she does, and she sobs in her arm. And uh, she's like, oh, Ariana. And Ariana just sits right next to Poofy, who's waiting for her to sit on the couch. And so she's like, oh, are you feeling stronger at all? Darling, it's been, what, two, three days? Uh, let's see. My follower count has been going up for 71 hours, three days. I'm just pretending to not know exactly how much time it's been. <laughs> yeah, so Ariana's like, well, I've, you know, I've been, like, trying to, like, lean into my anger because the only thing that keeps me from dry heaving i don't know and she's like oh it's not a consolation at all but none of us expected this thing like when did this start when did your little wings break off my dear broken sparrow the web of deceit and did schwartz know how many people have been broken by this can they all fit in this room and uh, she's like i don't know it took to, for today until schwartz even reach out to me and it was just a bunch of words that don't mean anything and he said something like he doesn't want to kick his friend while he's down well he's not down so kick him and she's <laughs> like oh he deserves a good kicking and from what i've heard she's gone completely into hiding she hasn't spoken i hope she hasn't lost her voice <laughs> <laughs> just kidding i can tell you where raquel is she's in this cabinet magic so, so and it's like she should she should move to another state and change her name back to Rachel or come up with someone some other name that she can fake because she will not be welcome in this town again. No, and so, um yeah. So Lisa's like, well from what I knew of Raquel, I didn't think she was capable of being that secretive or sneaky. She's a very dumb girl. Very very dumb. So Ariana's like, from well they've... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no. No, it's fine. Go ahead. From what they've told me, the physical connection wasn't there where it should have been. And then along comes this beauty queen that's clearly up for it. It was too much to resist. So I said, you can have him. All I will take is your voice, your voice, your voice. <laughs> I mean, what a week for... What a time for a new Little Mermaid to be coming out. Talk about poor unfortunate souls. I know. And then cutting to the Little Mermaid preview. It's so good. I'm so excited. Can't wait for you, May 26th. I know. It's coming up soon. So basically, um, yeah, Ariana's just like, I hate him so much. And she's like, you know, that's normal. That's normal, darling. But you're going to get through this. Hold on. Let me look like I'm crying too. <sighs> it's going to be difficult. It's going to take some time. But you will get through it. And on the other side is a job in the garden of Sir. Oh, come on, Lisa. Still, you're still putting me back there. The I don't back, want to work there anymore. The back bar in the garden, darling, waiting <laughs> for you. Your wing will be a little bit rough, a little limpy, darling, when you fly, but you will no longer be a broken bird. Come to mama, darling. <laughs> Just pulling out little tiny bits of her hair and putting them in jars as she hugs her. So now we go to Katie's apartment and uh, Schwartz arrives and Katie's apartment remarkably much, much, much cleaner than Schwartz's like orderly put together. Uh, at least at the very least, we know she had the sense to say, huh, those cameras coming in here. I, I better make it look nice. So, so she, uh, he, he brings the dogs in and she goes, oh, my God, so fluffy. And he goes, yeah, fresh from the salon. She's like, I mean, you are you having a lot of sodium? What's wrong with you? What do you smell like yesterday? What's going on? <laughs> 
And he's yeah. like, well, I just had the most insane morning. Morning, Can I have a Coke? Oh, my God. How's Ariana doing? Relatively speaking, I mean, I sent her a text. It was long. I just feel so bad the way. Oh, God. I'm going to I'm gonna just, uh, uh, you know, move my leg up and down really fast right now, not look you in the eye. Okay, we're going to have this scene, aren't we? She's like, Tom, how long did you know? It's like, oh, I didn't. I, uh, you know, I didn't mark it in my calendar. I mean, uh, I guess, uh, I guess Sandoval told me like a month ago to two weeks ago to six months ago, but I think it was like a month ago. He goes, no, no, he did. He did. She's like, I don't believe that. No, for real, Katie, for real. That's what he did. It's like, mm -mm. she's like, they've always had each other's backs. So now we roll the footage, the beautiful bean footage of uh, the Toms covering for each other. Yes. And then she's like, they're each other's true, disgusting lovers. And she's like, you made a comment to me in October that was very telling. You said she's not following us around for me. Trust me. And he goes, I didn't say that. Come on. I guess you 100% did. He goes, no, he told me a month ago and I told him what to do. And that's the truth. And she goes, I know for a fact his ego wouldn't take you trying to hook up with this girl all summer long. And he's like, I wasn't trying to hook up with her. <laughs> she's like, he was pretending while he was fucking her all along. He goes, unbeknown, unbeknownst to me. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so he, she was like, why did you, why didn't you like encourage him to do something about this? He goes, Katie, do you know how hard this shit has been for me to process? I mean, my whole reputation is sullied completely over this. My reputation, the guy who swam in a river right before his wedding, my reputation's being damaged. I didn't do anything wrong. She I'm goes, worried about our bar. She goes, so you did know. And he goes, nah, uh, I need limited information. She goes, oh, exactly. So you don't get, so why don't you get on the right side of things and tell everyone the truth for once. And then the stage directions say, menacing music plays. It's like, I love that they have like a whole playlist for Katie. Menacing music. It's a Katie scene. Yeah. So yes. um, he's like, it was just a one night stand. But then that was around September. Oh my God. But then I was like, oh, it's disgusting. Oh God, how could you justify it? And then he was going to talk to Ariana and then it didn't work. And then he was going to make it work. But then he changed his mind. I didn't know what to do. And she's like, well, why didn't you tell him to do something about it? And he's like, Katie, this is my bar. She goes, fuck the bar. He blew up his life. And he goes, I know. But and she goes, you've been his bitch boy for how many years now? And he's like, oh my God, I'm not his bitch boy. I'm your bitch boy. I'm you're this boy i'm just a dude trying to get by in life i'm just a cute dude trying to get by in life and you know what i got you know i got a lot of my mind my health my wealth my family i mean there's man eating crocodiles in florida now like, i hate to break that it to you but what what did he say? that not is man the line crocodiles? of the episode that is the line of the episode for me he goes i got a lot of my mind my health my wealth my family there's a fucking man eating Nile crocodile in Florida right now. <laughs> I hate to break it to you. I, I think they've always been man times. eating. I'm pretty sure they've always been man eating. I, I hate to break hilarious. it. That hilarious. <laughs> She's like, you She's sound like, like a country song. Oh so my God. then we go to Ariana's kitchen where she's, it's like somebody's died. She's got her whole kitchen is covered in flowers that people have sent. And she's okay. just like, Sniffing them and just kind of enjoying all the gorgeous flowers, you know. And then we see the slide shoes, like the Adidas yeah. slides. Shuffle, 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 shuffle. So you're like, is this a drunk like bag lady? Who is this? Shuffle, shuffle. And the camera slowly comes up. Go, go, go. That's Chris. The triumph, the triumph and return of Kristen. She's like, seriously, seriously, I'm here. So she's like, she's like, oh my God, you look like so skinny. She's like, what? Well, Ariana's like, well, I haven't eaten. She's like, well, drink lots of water, get lots of electrolytes. I've been through this process before. I'm your Sandoval doula right now. So uh, she goes, uh, do you want some water or something? She goes, I want alcohol. Okay. Like, I think your ex boyfriend and I need, or like, after, like, I need a drink after hearing about your ex boyfriend. All okay. right. And she goes, you mean also your ex boyfriend? And she's like, ew. She goes, our ex boyfriend, Kristen. And they hug and laugh. And then we see the clip of back in the day when Kristen's going, oh, so, oh, so it's okay to fuck around with other people's boyfriends. And she's like, um, I wouldn't call it fucking around. Oh, okay. So you're, you're, you're saying it's okay to hook up with other people's boyfriends then? Is that what you're saying? It's okay to hook up with other people's boyfriends then? She's like, well, he told me that you guys were breaking up. Tom, did you tell her we were breaking up? Good luck, Ariana. 
Good luck. You and Ariana, you and wondering where Tom is every night when you text him, you and not being sure if he's ever telling the truth, and you win sharing a bed with the best liar I have ever known. Mariposa out. Kick off. <laughs> So Ariana, it's like my manager texted me that Us Weekly reached out and that Tom's camp is saying our relationship was, was one of companionship and convenience and not romance. And Kristen's like, basically, he's basically comparing it to the joke of a relationship I had with him. That was convenience. That was convenience. And, Ari and Ariana's saying that, like, yeah, they kissed, but she thought like it was an isolated thing. What happened with her and Tom, I guess, with the kiss before while she he was still with Kristen and um you know or she thought it was situation based like because he fed her all these stories and now she's like oh no that's who this person is and it's really shitty she starts crying she's like it's really shitty that it took me like nine years to figure this out and uh christine says, you want to burn some shit because like true crazy and like true crazy person <laughs> in true crazy person fashion the craziest in the group always takes up crystals or cards or whatever True. meditation bullshit we say it all the time and of course that's what Kristen is into now and, and I, I by the way love. i also saw a glimmer of like why Kristen and james were drawn to each other because ariana also says you know that was like nine years uh that i wasn't defending you for his sake and Kristen goes oh pish posh on me i was like pish posh <laughs> this is just like a nice correlation with the dun dilly dun piccadilly suckers doing dilly darling and loud pish posh so they go outside to burn affirmations and they've got like a candle or something and she's like and this is like a little bit up before we shove it up his ass cool <laughs> so i bought i'm a piss and i like feel the vibrations oh my god hold on i've got two Big metal uh, tweezer things. Look, I've got one of them here, Ben. Hold on, let me see. Oh yeah, let me see it. Let me see she your tweezers. This. She had this. Do you <laughs> see them? But she yeah, had two. She goes, dong, hmm. dong. She's listen, like this, a... listen to this vibration, dong. And Ariana's like, ah. wow, wow, okay. Well, ashes to ashes, and Ariana's like, and dust to side chicks. Whoa, seriously, that was pretty cool. Yeah, that. It's Beyonce, you know, something that I did not, I never shared with Sandoval. So uh, they burn things up and they hug. She's like, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Life is beautiful. So slay we must. Slay, caca. Seriously? Seriously, slay? Seriously? <laughs> Seriously, slay? <laughs> so um, that day was battles, but you don't have to do it alone. It's this song. And it's raining. Ben, you want to tell us a rain story from that week? No, I don't. But would you like to tell a story about how you ate snow in Texas? <laughs> Touche, my friend. So it's a rain day and the song's like, you, you're going to make it. Um, so Sandoval comes to LVP's house and he lets himself in. And Rocio's like, uh, hello. And he's like, oh, sorry, I came in. It's raining outside. She goes, yeah, it's a glass door. <laughs> She's like, there's an overhang. But you think yeah. this is a poor person's house? This is it's a, there's a canopy over there. Like, don't worry, idiot. he'll be fine. You'll be fine in the rain, okay? So Lisa comes in. She's wearing all black. She, she, Lisa does not allow Sandoval upstairs. So I, you know, the truth is, I was saying Lisa should come downstairs. But honestly, it's a sign of respect that when you come to Villa Rosa, you are invited to the upper inner sanctum, the way Ariana was. But Tom is only allowed to the first like Teddy yes. Mellencamp sofas, right? <laughs> yes, he only gets into the waiting room. Yes. So um the Mellon Camp, the uh honorary <laughs> Text historical <message>. site, <laughs> Teddy, Teddy Mellon Camp historical the, site. The trial of Teddy Mellon Camp text messages. Those yeah. that's where the sofas are. So, so um yeah, he comes in and um she's like, Oh, Tom, 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 fee you. I would sigh, but I'd really just like to say the word for you. He's like, thanks for seeing me, uh, Lisa. She's like, oh, well, I don't think this is a hug-worthy moment to you. And the weather really sets the tone. Don't you think? All oh, those ships <laughs> crashing up against one each other. <laughs> like oh, those crows. Like those crows are so grumpy up there. <laughs> what's what's that beautiful hand motion you're doing over there, Ronnie? Just tentacle, just... You just see tentacles starting to <laughs> rise slowly above her head. 
Ooh, it's quite tantric and sexy, sexy, unique tentacles. Oh. Well, I know you want to see me, and I've heard so much, but I don't understand. Ariana's been here. All she wanted was a little happiness, a little freedom, a little ability to walk around a certain town on her own. Do you, you, do. <laughs> it's like, well, I didn't want to hurt her, and like... Ariana has had had a hard time trusting people. Lisa's like, oh, so what she's going to have now? This isn't a trusting place when you've been sleeping with one of your best friends. You know, See, it's not even Nick Elaine. Just poor Raquel. At least turn gay for Elaine. I mean, at least fuck Nick Elaine, darling. I mean, if you're going to go <laughs> rung below that, Guillermo's a piece. But come on. Um, I really. love this. Uh, Tom has all this time while they're reshooting this. For somebody to tell him something decent to say. And he keeps changing his tap, right? So, you know, each each time he comes in with a different thing. This time he's like, I really wanted to tell Ariana, but I know that she has trust issues. So me not telling her, I didn't want to hurt her and make her have more trust. So now he's like, every, mm. everything he tries is him being a good person. Instead right. of just saying, I mean, oh, so frustrating. I so mean, anyway, she's, to, by the way, oh. to Raquel's, Raquel's, tiny little smidgen of credit at least Raquel said like yeah I just didn't have the willpower to, to stop like at least she said I didn't have the willpower she didn't say oh I, not a whole so thing about how like oh I wanted to tell Ariana but I couldn't tell Ariana I want just like I couldn't I can stop but but Sandoval it's always like oh well she had trust issues she has trust issues so I was really in the tough position here of having to try to navigate this affair you know ridiculous i was doing it for you and then he says oh and um you know there's no way that we were gonna wait until the reunion we would have told her before uh because there's no way either one of us would be comfortable with her sitting there defending us the entire reunion when we were doing that behind her back which is bullshit when were you gonna tell her this yeah. was right when the reunion was gonna film wasn't yeah. this like a couple of weeks uh -huh. before the reunion was supposed to film yeah they were yeah they filmed the reunion very quickly it's like hello sir get to get to confessing so yeah. they're like yeah like yeah we just like we could felt like as a human being like none of us wanted to have ariana defending us at the reunion because that would just be horrible if she was in that position and then it's like cut to september 14th 2022 ariana saying like i love raquel i love my boyfriend they're so trustworthy everyone should love them essentially is what she's saying and he's like, yeah, I mean, she goes, well, it looks terrible in retrospect, Tom. And he's like, well, I would love to have had a conversation with her, but she's so angry. And, she, and he's like, I've been conflicted about being honest because I just don't want to hurt Ariana more than I've already hurt her. <laughs> and he goes, and now I don't know that I'm ever going to get the chance to talk to her again. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa's like, oh, Jesus Christ. He <laughs> so... starts Jen Shaw. I swear, Jen Shaw. <laughs> and he looks and it's not really working. So then he gets up and he goes to the side and he goes against the window. He's like, oh. <laughs> he like hyperventilates. He hyperventilates. <laughs> He's hyperventilating against the window. <laughs> so funny. Oh, like doing a very dramatic you know, like uh, very theatrical on stage going for the Tony Award performance there. Oh, he's so terrible. And he's doing it. He's up against the glass window, pushing it. <laughs> and then he's by that big, you know, Lisa Vanderpump has the weirdest shit in her house. She's got a pot that's like seven feet tall. It's taller than a person. And then it's got pink things coming out of it, like those big furry things that just kind of like droop out. It like, <laughs> like snuffle up a guesses, yeah. but they're all different yeah, shapes. Yeah, I know. And he's like crying right in the middle of all these snuffle up a guess things. And she, you know, the minute he starts that fake sobbing, she gives that look like broken. Bad. So she's like, oh, it's been too much, I know. And she tells us, I will not turn my back on Sandoval. I will always condemn what he did, but they've all been guilty of things, maybe not at this level. But it brought it bought me that giant fir tree thing that washed up weathered old Twink is pretending to sob into now. So I've got to be somewhat grateful, don't I, darling? This disco home didn't build itself. So Lisa's like, it's like, where do we go from here? He's like, well, I just want Ariana to be happy. I want her to get the love that she deserves. And I want her to be so happy that I'm just going to go 
onto like the Howie Mandel podcast and just explain why she was the cause of all this. I just yeah, want her to be the cause of her She basically emotionally happiness. blackmailed me and threatened to kill herself if I ever did anything. He's a crazy uh, So, he, yeah. So, so she does the whole, like, you're not a bad. She puts on her little nun habit thing like Susan Sarandon in that that serial killer movie. Uh, uh, Death, dead Man Walking. Uh, dead Man so Walking. Called, yeah. She pulls her Dead Man Walking. She's like, you're not a bad person, Tom. You just did a bad thing. Now remember that while I fuck Kevin Carson. Whoa, whoa, Lisa, that was uh that was a different season surrounded movie. All right, well, <laughs> either way, you're good. You're <sighs> still hired for next season. Goodbye. Her catalog really provides a range of experiences that I enjoy. So uh <laughs> so now it's happy hour at a bar. We're going over to Cuenca Boulevard to Grandmaster Records, which is also where Garcelle and Erica had hot toddies i believe last season on on beverly hills in case anyone wanted to connect the dots and so they're at the happy hour we got like a lot of the gang here we got lala and katie lala's like this is cute this is cute and fun and charlie joins it almost seems like for a moment we were gonna get a scene of like charlie what do you think because you were like raquel's friend and you defended her but no we don't get that she's just she's just there oh charlie's already shown what she thinks on twitter comes <laughs> going yeah. oh my god charlie was hilarious during this on twitter so of course lala shows up in her sent it to daryl sweatshirt <laughs> i know just oh, so ridiculous going. so uh she was like um i brought my sister coco because i don't want to be alone <laughs> katie's like okay so <laughs> katie goes are you okay and she's like no <laughs> and so ariana shows up in a revenge dress you know she's like my final yeah. scene of the season i look fucking amazing in gold and the rest of them are in black all sad yeah. Um, so then Lala's like, I mean, how are you doing? And she goes, I just want to support Ariana tonight. I would not imagine that this would happen today. Hold on. Let me suck in my bottom lip and then cross my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the news. Like earlier today, I get like a call from my publicist and it like took me a very long time to pick up the phone because as you know, I physically cannot make a fist, which is what you need to do to pick up a phone. So once I finally got that, my publicist told me <laughs> that Raquel has filed for a temporary restraining order. I added it to my special box. I keep temporary restraining orders in. This one's from Rob. Um, this, 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 this other one's from Rob too. Uh, this is a guy I dated in like season four. I forgot his name. Um, this one is from the penguin that I tried to give, that I tried to adopt <laughs> Adam. for that guy. <laughs> yeah, it's Adam's penguin. Adam's wow. penguin got a temporary restraining order on me. <laughs> I tried to visit him at the zoo and the penguin just like kept running away and going for a fish. I was like, excuse me. Because you know, Sheena takes that adoption very seriously. Your father yeah, and I penguin. have broken up now, so I'm gonna I'm gonna write you a letter. Here's what I've been doing. Good as gold. Blah, 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 blah. The penguin's like, leave me alone, please. Ronnie, you know that we have a penguin? We sure do. I have this yes. certificate here somewhere for that damn. Oh, penguin. okay. I was wondering where that penguin that, that certificate was. Someone I think in Minnesota adopted a penguin in yeah, we have you know, our for own. us during yeah. that season. It was really wonderful. I know. We we have a child that's together, like what, me and Ben. We have a, that's the thing. That's the thing. Ron and I, we're in it for the long haul because yeah. we have a child. We're we married. Have a penguin child. We have a child. <laughs> but you know what? If if ever we have trouble in our relationship, we're like, let's stay together for the child. Let's think about the children. Let's think about our penguin. <laughs> the poor penguin. <laughs> that we never uh, visit. I oh, know. we have to visit our penguin and, and the next time we go when we go to we Minnesota should. next month, we'll visit okay. that penguin. Okay. I'll go. Yeah. That will be so cute. We can hold hands and take pictures. <laughs> so um Lala's like, I just want you to remember this is not you forever this is like just you for right now S send it to daryl's on sale now at lalas.com so uh sheena's like i can't believe that this person i took under my wing and then like like i was a mother to her and then i like punched her and now she's taking it to a legal level with me <laughs> i've been like a mom and a sister to that girl like i even showed her how to make a crop top and for her to do that to me i mean like if i could make a fist i would make one and shake it but all I can do is just do jazz hands. I'm sorry. So uh, Katie's like, you gave her a place to live. And Sheena's like, that I paid for. And Charlie's <laughs> like, this is like demented. This is like a dark. And like, at this point, it's like a dark. See you next season. <laughs> That's her line for the night. So Ariana's like, I can't wait to be light years away from this. And Katie's like, 
well, um, so I just saw Schwartz last night and like he swore it was like one time and never was going to happen again. So he like didn't think anything of it. And she's like, ugh, she's like, ugh, you know, like he just said that. And then he like let me go and like champion their bar, publicize it, go to opening bar night and everything and acting like he's my friend when he knew about it. Yeah, pretty shitty. And Katie's like, oh, by the way, he's coming. Okay. He's coming, by the way. <laughs> and so Schwartz comes in like, hey, guys, hi, wow, whoa. And Charlie goes, and then the devil walked in and goes, yeah, oh, Courtney, hi, Courtney, hi, Coco. And everyone just ignores <laughs> him. And Ariana goes, um, I don't think anyone here wants to speak to you, so I guess you should probably ask me if I want to speak alone. He goes, uh, <laughs> okay, uh, do you want to get a drink? And she's like, sure. So uh, he's like, whoa, this place is so cool. I used to have a bar cocktail lounge too. And Lala goes, yeah, we're currently trying to blow that up. So. <laughs> Lala was cracking me up all episodes. That was I great. Not, I, can't, I can't lie. I'm like, I feel like the last two or three episodes, I'm like thawing on, like Lala was driving me nuts all season. But the past two or three episodes, I'm like... Kind well, of, Lala kind of is, has always been the best weapon when she's she's going against someone that you don't like. That's what that's always yeah. when we've cheered for Lala. Lala's first seasons was going against all the mean girls who were being fucking horrible to her. I mean, God, I will never forget how mean they were. And Sheena tells us later again, reminds us. But yeah, they were going so hard. And like when she's telling someone to fuck off that you really hate, God, that's when she's her she best. That's a good job yeah. at it. Yeah, she's so yeah, good she really it. is. Also really good at um, narrating an Uber commercial. It's Uber Eats commercial. So okay, good. I'll at watch that. it. I'll watch it. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll find the bravery to watch it. It's, it's. I mean, it's. You know, it is terrible. It's like a terrible commercial, but it's like no. The wonderful truth is, I was terribleness. Just, the truth is, we were just running behind tonight. We're doing a, a late night recording, and you were waiting for me, and I was like, just. I was like, I want to watch that, but I've got to get through my notes, man. <laughs> oh. So Ariana sits down with I Schwartz. I did it for you, Ben. Oh, for I me? I did it for you. Oh. Okay, hold on. Time check. I'm just curious. It's one hour and 55 minutes. Holy Jesus of mother of God and Joseph. What the hell well, is we've got... with these three-hour recaps we're doing of this show? I know. We're going crazy. Well, we've got like... We've got two more big scenes left of this episode. I'm so not Ariana bored or anything. I was just like, wow, I said late night recap. I'm not fucking no. kidding. What time is it? Okay. It's one nineteen for you right now. Yeah, party. It's only 11, 19 yeah. for me. Yeah. So Ariana <laughs> Ariana's like, oh my God, time zones? I'm like crazy. I physically cannot even go into a different time zone because of my nails. So Ariana's like, Can I start by saying something to you, Schwartz? If I hear anything about Sandoval being down and you feeling bad for him, I'm just going to like get up and walk away. No, 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 no. I'm not here to advocate for him, even though he is really down. I'm just like pissed at Sandoval and like, I feel like he exploited my kindness and like our business. And like we put our hearts and souls in that business, which as we know, is the biggest victim in all this. Yeah, so basically he's here to be like, listen, we're getting slammed by the public and our business is going down the drain and we really need you to say something or put out something like don't take it out on the business or go out on your your Instagram and say, guys, this isn't the fault of the business or something. This is clearly what he's trying to do. At least in my eyes, it seems like what he's trying yeah. to do because he's not making Tom the victim. He's making himself. He's like, he exploited my kindness and you know, also our business that we put our heart and soul into. It's just, yeah, well, he apologized to your business before he apologized to me, which was literally pathetic. And he goes, yeah, well, I'm not excusing that. It's just like our partners are freaking out. I'm freaking out. The line cooks are freaking out. They've been there three months now. This is crazy. <laughs> and she goes, well, of course you're freaking out. And he goes, but people are boycotting us. And she goes, well, why would someone want to give money to that man? And he's like, yeah, but the thing is, like, we booked a little family in there, you know? She goes, yeah, well, he fucked up your family. He didn't give a single flying fuck about your family, about your fucking family. How does that feel? I was like, yes. Yeah. This was my favorite moment for her in this whole thing when she's finally, it's like, here's this man baby crying and trying to be the huge victim and asking for her to pity him. And she's like, no, you fucking sat there and enabled this shit for months and you deserve well, every fucking thing you're getting, sir. Yeah. Like you're sitting here crying, pretending like something's being done to you. She's also like highlighting how thoughtless Sandoval was. Like, yeah, he did fuck up your family because he was only thinking about himself at that moment. And she literally says, because, like, what did he think was going to happen? He was going to cheat on me and walk away unscathed. It's like, oh, yeah, well, oh, 
well, I just wanted to come and look you in the eyes and just say, our booth arrived. But also I'm like really sorry for this whole thing. And I'm not looking for sympathy here, but I'm just being painted as a co-conspirator. Conspirator, and it's like fucking devastating to me. Don't be mad at me, America. Yeah, you are a co-conspirator. So fuck off. So Ariana's like, um, well, I don't think that you're that person, but I will not have mutual friends with him. So I'm not your friend anymore. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. It's over. <laughs> Which is oh kind of actually what Lala did at the very beginning of the season when she gathered everyone on the rooftop and said, it's like, it's either him or me. Um, and we're like, wow, Lala. But now it's sort of like when Ariana does it, I'm like, yeah. So Schwartz like, dude. Well, she didn't give a choice. She wasn't like, okay, everybody, let's have a meeting. Here's the choice. You choose pickleball over me. She was like, um, you're dead to me. Bye. <laughs> yeah. Schwartz like, dude. I was always assured by him that he was gonna he was handling and doing the right thing. She goes, um, I am not it. He's not handling it. I am not it. I was his fucking ride or die. I defended him to uh, to you even and like to try to like I was like trying to make him go five days without drinking so that he could get his sperm tested so we could have embryos. And because he really wanted that down the road, and I wanted him to have that. And I like I wish that I didn't miss him, but I really wish that that I didn't miss him, but I feel like what I miss is not real so she's is... crying right and so he's uncomfortable so he's looking away and doing his finger chewing thing that lala called him out on he's literally chewing on his fingers oh what a wuss so loved that so then two weeks later um sheena is um reading she's reading a comment on patreon and it's like <laughs> you guys like knowing what we know now they're like blatantly obviously with their affair and you guys just didn't notice and brock goes who's saying that she goes someone on patreon he goes well guys we know you're not geniuses all right <laughs> I thought he was saying that we're not geniuses. Oh, that would make more sense. I was like, damn, you're just coming for your Patreon people. It's like fucking stupid <laughs> Patreon people. I was like, it's... we'll take your Patreon people. Go to watch what crap ends Patreon for this video recap. Ding. I mean, obviously Ding. we're not geniuses. Cut to Brock eating cereal with a rolling pin. So Sheena's like, well, Sandoval finally liked text me and said he wanted me to hear him out. And Sheena gives... Just this hilarious backstory about she's known him for like 14 years. And she goes, when the show started, we were at our like first upfronts in New York. And I had like no friends there. And I had like Sandoval. And I just remember what we were doing at the red carpet. And like, no one wanted me in the photos. And like, he put like his arm around me and pulled me. I was like, no, you're a part of this. You're a part of this NBC Universal Comcast upfronts experience. You're with all of us. Get in the photo. You know, honestly, I didn't find that funny at all. I thought I thought that was so fucking sad. And she's like literally crying because she's still traumatized how those girls were to her in that first season. Because it wasn't just at first she made it sound like they were the ones who were asked to go to upfronts, right? So I was like, oh, it's just Tom and her. And she was felt lonely. But then they show us the whole cast who wouldn't even be with her, who wouldn't even like take a picture with her after the whole season was done. God, those people were vile. No, but I just, all of those I just... people. I just Gross. love that, that like so many formative memories for Sheena are wrapped up in things like going to the NBC upfronts in 2013. <laughs> and being traumatized. But I did there. think that too, though, by the way, I just, just, just so you know, I actually thought that too. I was like, damn, they were mean to her even at the upfronts. Wow. Yes. This is and gas. people ask where so much of my residual anchor comes from. It's this. It is poor Sheena crying right here, right at now. At the upfronts. People. This, I rest my case. Okay. This was my witness. Thank you, Sheena. The you irony, the irony that that she she forged a friendship at with Tom Sandoval at a place called at a thing called Upfront. I know. Also, <laughs> I'm sorry. I would say case case closed and then bang a gavel, but unfortunately, I can't make a fist around the gavel uh, because it's <laughs> physically impossible. So I'm just gonna have to say court dismissed. Okay, bye. I'm just gonna clap on top of the gavel, and you'll have to pretend that's the hammer that I hitting can do. The... <laughs> that I can do. That's the hammer hitting the desk. That I can do. So, so um, then knock, oh, knock, this... Brock's like, here we go. So Sandoval's like, hey, guys. And he comes in with, with a, a big, big box. box. And Brock's like, oh, what's this? And he's like, I don't know. It was outside. He goes, oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah, you know what? Sandoval, that's a, I would say in your image rehabilitation, bring little gifts when you go and do your apology tour. It's because... so funny. It's like a kid, it's like <laughs> the Kizix that Sheena ordered. And Brock's like, all right, well, I'm going to take Summer to the park. All right, well, tough one you put us in, bro. All right, going to let you have a chat. Like, all right, just uh, some random uh, Brock disappointment as he uh, leaves. Thanks for that, Brock. Yeah. 
So Sheena's crying. And you know, it's so funny because I think I I I also noticed how she was doing that thing with her face. Cause I apparently wrote down in my notes, Sheena is crying like a sock puppet. <laughs> she's like, mm -hmm. <laughs> So she's so Sandoval's crying. He's like, I just want to say I'm like really sorry to like Ariana, but also like to you and like to the things that I said to you that night. Like I feel like really mad that night. Because apparently that night he acted like our friendship was nothing and he made comments like we're not even friends and like I'm no one to you. And he goes, oh, this is like when I turned 40, I had this like spiritual awakening. Like I was going to break up with Ariana regardless. And she's like, ah, uh, but you didn't. You slept with her best friend instead. Hmm. I've known you for 13, 14 years, but I don't know you. Like the person I know wouldn't do this. The person six years ago that said he didn't have sex in Miami, which by the way, I knew was true. Yeah, then we got the classic. We had sex. We had sex. No, we didn't. No, we didn't. We had sex. And Sandoval goes, Ariana has like always known the truth about that, which sounded pretty much like an admission from Tom Sandoval, right? Yeah. She's like, so whatever, the Miami girl, this is the first time you've ever cheated because you're talking to Sheena. Her original plot line on this show was banging a guy who was going through his middle age crisis. Like, you really think too. you're going to get some pity from her over this? You know, she's been roasted over this for years. So mm -hmm. then, um, he says there was one other time that he cheated too. And she goes, oh my God, you were sick. And she kind of laughs. And she's like, was it a rando? And he's like, no. He goes, yeah. Well, no. I mean, that's not fair. I'm not going to go into it because like things with Ariana and I have not. So it's somebody they, it's somebody else in their circle that he doesn't well, want to. Ariana, Andy Cohen asked Ariana on Watch What Happens Live about this. And she said it was someone they all, know, you, everyone like that Andy knows, they all know but not part of the Vanderpump Rules world. Oh, Whatever okay. that means. So it's like a Bravo person, probably, but not probably. Their actual. So it wasn't like Billy Lee, because. Right. I don't think it was. We didn't Billy even Lee. talk about that. You know, so much of this plot we've seen play out already. So it's almost anticlimactic in a way, isn't it? Unless. Because well, we already know all this stuff, but. I, it could be Billy Lee, because if Ariana says this person's not part of the Vanderpump Rules world, maybe she's being a literalist because Billy Lee's not on the show anymore. Like no longer. Hmm. Yeah. Maybe. But yeah, we didn't even talk about that part. But yeah, who knows? So um, uh, Sheena, let's see, blah, blah, blah. So he's like, we haven't been good for a long time. It doesn't matter, Tom. Like, he still doesn't understand. It's not that you broke up with Ariana. No one would give a fuck if you guys broke up. It's what you yeah. did and how you did it and who you did it exactly. with. Exactly. And that you're still though. kind of blaming Ariana for it. Yeah. So she's just like, why would you buy a house with her? So he goes, because I felt like it brought us closer together. Like, it felt like a Band-Aid. Like, but how do I end a relationship? I was like, really? Like, you can't be cliche enough. You bought a house together because you thought it would solve it. I mean. And then not only did you buy a house with her, but you took out a huge loan against that house that she owned while you wanted to break up with her. Like, it just gets worse, you know? And yeah. then she's like, and then, of course, again, it's a new scene where he comes in with a new tactic, right? And now he's going to really go over the top because nothing he's worked, nothing has worked really with anybody. So she goes, um, then you being a dumb, you have a conversation with her. And he goes, I tried to. She threatened to fucking kill herself. Which has got to be the lowest thing he's done so far. I mean, right. out of all of the things, this is the fucking lowest. And when I it heard him say shit like that on Howie Mandel, my head popped off that day. I think my head popped off. And it's it almost popped really off vile. today, even I, even though I knew it was coming, you know? And really you know what? Bad. I loved Sheena's response. She's like, well, then you know what you do? You fly in Tanya. You bring over Jeremy. You have all her friends there ready to rally around her like we're doing now. Like, you're literally saying, I'm leaving. I'm not happy. And then we pick up the pieces and then you left. Like, you don't fuck her friend because the truth is, like, uh, he's still in the same place as he would have been uh, if he had if he had just broken up with Ariana, and I think that was like, I, I this this is just bullshit on his part, huge bullshit. So about, like, he's oh, like from an outside uh, POV, it's like easy to say I should have broken up with her, but like emotionally, it's like climbing Mount Everest, you know, <laughs> because I love Ariana, so I want to look out for her. I don't want to hurt her. You're sleeping with your best friend. You have a, you're having a love affair. You're having an active relationship. Uh, so she was like, well, I don't know where we go from here because, like, obviously we're, like, not friends anymore because, like, I can't support anything you've done anymore. And so she starts to cry and she goes, I'm really going to miss you. And, like, I know you don't deserve any friends, but, like, I need to go make my baby dinner. Okay? I'm making baby enchiladas tonight. Uh. 
So he's like, I guess I'll leave. Can I take this box? It looks really good. She's like, just go, Tom. <laughs> so he starts leaving and he goes, I'm sorry, as he leaves. And then it says stage direction. She blows raspberry. <laughs> and that's how it ends. I and was left ended like, it. what the fuck does that mean? I was kind of a little shocked that this is how the episode ended. I was like, okay, now here it comes. Because I, 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 I watched this. I watched the show without seeing like how far along we were. I just was like, I'm going to be in it. I'm just going to go. I'm not going to count how long, how much time is left. And then it ended. I was like, oh, oh, okay. But you wow. Know, I was that was wondering a little why it ended with Sheena too. But if you think about it, you know, she explained that it was her longer. They were the friends longest. But also Sheena is the most forgiving out of everybody on the show. And mm -hmm. at the end of the day, Sheen is the core of the show because she does really like everybody. Like she always tries to, even when she does like this season, she's sick of Katie's bullshit, but she's still at her core wants to be friends with Katie. Don't you think? Right. I think Sheena just wants everybody to like her and they just never yeah. have. And <laughs> yeah. ultimately like when even Sheena is like, you're dead to me. Like you are, you're, we're done. I don't think we've ever seen that from Sheena. Um, and, uh, that I think was the ultimate ending. It's like, bye. Yeah. You've pissed off even Sheena to the point of no return, sir. Wow. Yeah, it was sort of weird because I don't think they were in a position that they could craft a decent ending for this. It's so raw and so fresh. You can't put something uplifting because that feels fake. Like, I thought they were going to do something where they would sort of they would show somehow like all the great cool things that Ariana is doing, like going to the going to the White House and. Like going about having a Bloomingdale shoot being a lifetime movie, all these things that are coming her way now. I thought they might do some sort of like montage. I would have liked them to see, like, show the Tom Sandoval or show the post that Rachel Ra Raquel put out about Mental Health Awareness Day, and then seeing that she was really at the Miraval spa, yeah. and then seeing uh, Tom just being chased and like hiding his face and looking methier and methier, and his hair getting strawier and strawier, mm -hmm. and then um, you see Raquel like hiding like at the mirror of all, but even people there hate her, and then you see Ariana at the White House, and you see Ariana like getting her own solo on Watch What Happens, you know, all the kind of ending, and then it just ends with Tom drinking a 40 out of a paper bag in front of a 7-Eleven like singing, yeah. you know, uh, you know, Africa, American pie, Africa. To somebody for for dollars. Yeah, Africa, that would have been that would have been good too. But like, uh, yeah, it was just him walking out the door. I, I was. They didn't even give him like a cinematic like driving off into the. I won't say sunset because it was probably raining, but driving off into the rain. You know, like I'll there goes his car, it. and that's like, the I end remember. of the season. Ben's like, I remember that specific day. It, it was, was raining. raining. And it sucked. It was raining. It was a rain because there was a leak and I had to deal with it. <laughs> oh, yeah. You actually did have like serious trauma on this rain day. It wasn't just like <laughs> I did. the regular L.A. person. Because I I was the, I'm the same way I when I lived there. You know, you you forget what it's like, the rain trauma. But you really did have trauma on that. I lost day. power. Man, I'm I had sorry. I was, I was freezing and that. I got sick because of it. Ben, and I've been teasing you this whole time. It's just like a general it's LA okay. joke, just... but I forgot your trauma that day, babe. I, was I owe you an apology. Dude, I'm sorry. Dude, like, I, I love can't you, believe ben. it. Like, like, it's like I tried so hard to like express myself to you, and then you were just like making fun of me. Like, I was. Right. I'm sorry. That wasn't the right it's time okay. to be making fun of you, babe. You can I make love no. You, I think rain in LA is always good to make jokes. No, for, but that but was. I bad. was like, oh, it was raining that day. You're like, oh yeah. Why don't you talk about some more? And I was like, oh okay. Wow. No, because I was joking in the beginning about how LA people, when it rains, everybody's traumatic about it for like a month, and so I was just making jokes on that. I wasn't literally saying you were like that. But now that I think back, yeah, that was when your roof was leaking. You lost your power for like days and you had to go stay in a hotel. I had to go to a hotel. Oh, that was bad. Yeah, I really am <laughs> such a fucking asshole then. I'm so sorry. I didn't oh, realize. please. You think like based off of what we just talked about that you think this counts as being an asshole is making a joke about rain <laughs> when we're talking about a guy who's throwing, you know, someone's mental health in her face while cheating That's... on her best friend. No, yeah, Ronnie, you're you fine. Know, Don't worry but... about that. I'm You're gonna make saying, everyone you know, nervous. You're gonna make everyone nervous that we're in a fight. I know. Yeah, I know. People are already uh, worried. You would know. By the way, you would know. You wouldn't just sense it. You would fucking know because you think you would know because I'm the biggest bitch in the world, and that's true. Like I'm, I can't hide it when I'm mad. Ben can't hide when he's mad either. Okay, you would mm -hmm. definitely know from both of us if we were in a fight. Oh yeah. But oh also, yeah. You know. Yeah. You yeah. Know. But also, um, 
just a quick note, you know, this has been such a fun show to recap for 10 years. And, you know, we come on here, we make all these jokes. This really is just fucking sad. And it was hard to watch. And some of the shows we do are so much fun. This one is usually fun. Last week's live show was so much fun. This recap was, it's always fun in a way. But God, this is fucking dark. This was rough to watch. And I'm so episode. glad that the season is done. Like, I'm, I'm, I've had it. I've had it. I thought it was My a fantastic episode. It was. Uh, it was dark, but it was a fantastic. It was actually like it was. gripping television. I was watching. I was like, "This is crazy." I actually felt like I was partaking in a pop culture event. You know, I was watching this live. Like, I I got on and I watched this live, and I felt like I. Not only did I watch it, Dom pulled up a chair and watched with me. He doesn't like this show, and he watched with me, and like it felt like a thing. Like it, it's just it's such an exciting thing to to tune in with what feels like the whole country to watch something unfurl. It was like, it was, but that's not why I loved it, but that was a, an interesting ancillary effect, but I thought it was very gripping. It was raw. I think they, I think the producers did a great job in piecing this together. I think it was, by the way, a fantastic season uh, with like lots of cringy moments. And I think it was fantastic, not only because it was, they did a good job with the show, but it really was one of the most unique viewing experiences we've had with one of these shows where we are given one narrative dealing with another narrative that's unfurled in real time and having to navigate between the two both as viewers and in our case as recappers as well was really fascinating tricky at times but um pretty incredible yeah good season well everybody thank you so much for being with us this whole time and guess what it's not over there's still a month yeah. of reunion festivus to come so we will be back doing this hopefully we get to do another live show one at least one more vanderpump rules live show out there and um this has been great thanks for being with us on demand everybody who's out there watching and supporting us that way and we love you guys we will talk to you God, tomorrow i guess top chef did you mean to Fuck up your top entire chef. life you fucking <laughs> weathered ass aged ass leathery <laughs> ass twink with dried ass messy Hi, hair Hi, chefs. Please throw Tom Sandoval into a blast chiller. Thanks. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.